ancient evil has arisen from the shadows. Sauron gathers power. His malice inflames those who follow him. To the north, he sends Agendauer, cruel master of dark sorceries, to crush all who would dare to oppose him. Against this rising shadow, stand those who do not seek glory, who do not seek power, Those who fight to stem the onslaught. To protect their people, their lands, and all of Middle-earth. Three bright flames of courage. To challenge. Darkness. Of the Great War of the Ring, many songs have been sung and many tales told. The names of heroes like Gandalf the Grey, Aragorn the King, and Frodo the Ringbearer are greatly revered, and rightly so. Yet Sauron's grasp stretched much further than the lands of Gondor and Rohan alone, and his forces might have done great evil in the north of Middle-earth had a handful of heroes not stood in his path. Their stories, too, deserve to be told. Pay heed now to one such tale, which begins here in the town of Bree, just a few short days before Frodo arrived on his quest. Aragorn. Enadon. Well met and in company with Andriel of Rivendell and Farin of Erebor. An unlikely trio to find walking through the doors of the Prancing Pony. You were at Sarn Ford last I knew. Do you bear news from Harbalad? Yes. Grim news. I feared it would be so. Quickly, tell me what has happened, but keep your voices low. There are unfriendly ears, even here in Bree. Three days passed. The guard at Sarn Ford was attacked by nine black riders. We were overwhelmed, and the enemy passed into the Shire. This is worse than I imagined. I know these riders. It is from Mordor they come. Our folk could not hope to stand against the Nine together. How bad were our losses? Very bad. We tried to resist them, but they were surrounded by an aura of unnatural dread. There is more you should know. After the rout, one of the Black Riders met with an ally, a man of great malice and power. Agnawa. 
As our master commanded, I have stirred up the orcs of the mountains. Even now, I have a force gathering amid the ruins of old Fornost. Return at once, and prepare your forces. We will have need of them soon. My orcs will be ready. These lands have known peace for too long. They will soon feel the Dark Lord's wrath. If this Agandar has a force at Fornost, then our position grows all the more desperate. But why all this force against the peaceful halflings? It can't be the enemy sees them as a threat. I will say this much. There is a hobbit of the Shire who should be coming this way with a great burden. If it falls into the hands of the enemy, it will mean doom for us all. Now this hobbit is adrift on the road with enemies all around. I must find him before they do. And I need you to help me keep him safe. You are my chieftain. I will gladly do whatever you command. I... I'm a part of this now as well. Then we three are of one mind. How can we aid you? We must reduce the threat from the enemies gathered at Fornost. Travel there and do whatever you can to keep the enemy's eye turned towards you and away from the Shire. Perhaps we will have help in this task. Eladan and Elro here were in the north when last I heard. Any gathering of the enemy is certain to attract their attention. Good. You could find no better allies than the sons of Elrond half Elven. I hope we meet, but with or without help, the enemy will be kept busy. We'll make sure of that. I'd like to ask you a few questions, Aragorn. Shh. Here in Bree, there is no Aragorn. Only Strider the Ranger. What about this man who met with the Black Riders? This Agendauer? What do you make of him? Some servant of the Dark Lord, and by his name, one to be feared. His presence in the North bodes ill for us all. But I'm glad you discovered it. At least now we are forewarned. Those things that attacked us at Sarn Ford, those Black Riders, I've never seen anything like them before. What are they? Do you not know them? There are whispered tales and legends enough that tell of them. They are the Nine, the Ring Wraiths. Of all the servants of the enemy, they are the most feared. This Agandauer, he was no Wraith. He seemed like a man, 
One filled with dark power, maybe, but a man all the same. But what kind of man would serve the Dark Lord? Not all the Dark Lord's servants are wraiths and orcs. There have been and still are many men, warriors and kings that walk alive under the sun, and yet are under his sway, willing or unwilling. Tell me about this place, Fornost. Fornost was once a great city, the capital of the Dúnedain kingdom of Arnor. It fell to the Witch King long ago. The men of Gondor and the Elves formed an alliance that drove the Witch King out, but Fornost was never rebuilt. The ruins remain a place of dread for many. The men of Bree call it Dead Man's Dyke and fear to go near. It is a perfect place for our enemies to gather in secret. Well, it's a secret no more. We'll go to Fornost and take the fight to them. Welcome to Bree. You're a stranger around here. May I ask you a few questions? What sort of questions? We hear a lot of talk from travelers these days. Most of them speak of war and of a growing shadow in the east. The townsfolk just dismiss this, say it's far away and doesn't concern us, but I'm not so sure. You've traveled, maybe seen a few things. What's your opinion? Should we be... I'd say there is good cause to worry. I was afraid of that. If only I could convince others. But until then, I will have to take action on my own. What do you intend to do? I'd like to arrange for arming the town. We'll need more than pitchforks if we're forced to defend ourselves. I tried to convince a dwarven merchant to bring us weapons, but he refused. Hmm, that's strange. Did he say why? He seems convinced there's no market for weapons in this town. The city wouldn't be worth his time. Maybe I should talk to him. Dwarf to dwarf. It's worth a try. His name is Groff. He's selling his wares from a market stall down the street. You might still find him there. I'll let you know what he has to say. Master Dwarf, just come in from the Blue Mountains or the Iron Hills, have you? <laughs> I'm sure you've had a long trip, and you'll be wanting a good meal and a nice bed. We get many a travelling dwarf here in the Prancing Pony, but I don't think I've seen you before. <laughs> but don't mind me, I'm forgetting that dwarves like to keep their business to themselves. What can I do for you, then? Tell me about Bree. Oh, Bree is an old place. Been here for ages and ages. This is the only place in the world you'll find hobbits and men living side by side. We used to see a lot of travelers coming through Bree. Not so much nowadays. But I still get customers enough to keep me busy. Tell me about your inn. The Prancing Pony's been in my family for generations. I can't rightly say how long, well, it goes that far back. I'm told there's been an inn on this spot nearly as long as there's been a town. I may have need of a few things before I leave town. Where should I look? Well, we have stores and shops here in town, but I suspect most of them wouldn't suit your needs. Hmm. You might try Adelgar Oldbank's shop. He's got a collection of unusual items which might interest you. It's right across the street from here, on the corner. If it's repairs you need, try Elman Brushwood, our blacksmith. His smithy is just across the street, but there on the corner. What news do travelers bring lately? Lately, the talk's mostly about trouble away to the south. Seems like there may be war or some other calamity brewing down there. Folks have been coming up the Greenway, or the old road from the south, looking for a place to find some peace. Are they settling here in the Breelands? Well, no. It's not that we aren't sympathetic to their troubles. It's just that Bree belongs to Bree folk. We can't take in a lot of outsiders. 
And the truth is, I don't like the look of a lot of these newcomers. Some of them have mischief on their minds. Thanks. Farewell. What have we here? A stranger in town. A stranger's just what I'm looking for. Interested in a little harmless pastime? It's time to make some money from it. I have no time for games now. Goodbye. Oh, hello. I didn't see you there. Got my head in the clouds, I guess. What you've got is this look of someone with a lot on their mind. Troubles. Oh, no. It, it's no trouble. Not really. It's more like... Well, I'm in love. Oh, ho. that sounds like trouble to me. Who is the lucky woman? It's Idona Bellflower, my childhood sweetheart. I always thought we were meant for each other, but her father doesn't like my prospects. He's arranging a match with the blacksmith, Edmund Brushwood. A man with a trade? That's a good match. But how about the lass? Does she love you? That's just it. I'm not sure. I always told her how much I loved her when we were children. It was all a game back then. But then we got older and... it got so much harder to say. Well, that won't do. You'd best tell her now, or you'll wish you had later. I want to tell her. I do. Look, this locket belonged to my mother. I want to give it to Idona as a token of my love. But the chain is broken, and Elman the blacksmith is the only one in town who can fix it. If I take it to him, he's sure to suspect something and turn me away. Well then, give it to me. I'll take it to him. Yes, that might work. Edmund would never suspect a stranger like you. There's one more thing. My donor's father, he keeps a careful eye on his daughter and won't give me a moment alone with her. Leave it to me then. I'll make sure she knows how you feel. Wonderful! <laughs> Just perfect! Take the locket to Elman at the smithy across the street. Once it's repaired, bring it to Idona and tell her... Tell her I love her and that I'll do everything in my power to make her happy. Every day we are together. All right, all right. I'll tell her. Don't you fear. And just one more thing. After you talk to her, could you come back and tell me what she said? One way or another, I have to know. Don't fret. I'll bring you word once I've spoken with the lass. dwarf in me shop. I am surprised. I have often seen your folk looking down their noses at me work. But you dwarves do know your business when it comes to shaping metal. What can I do for you? Got a pony that's thrown a shoe, perhaps? Farewell, Smith. Back again. What can I do for you? This locket has a broken chain. Can you fix it for me? Let's see it. Hmm. Looks like something might have been made in these parts. Maybe back in the old dad's day. 
Wouldn't expect one of your kind to have something like this. Where'd you come by? I'm looking for repairs, not questions. Will you fix it or not? No need to go all cross. I was just wondering is all. Anyway, it's a simple enough job. It'll cost you a silver penny, though. There you are. Good as new. My thanks. Farewell, Smith. Ah, welcome to my shop, Master Dwarf. Perhaps you have need of a thing or two? I have some very interesting items available. Or maybe you have something to sell. I'm always interested in dwarf-made goods. You get a lot of dwarves passing through, do you? Oh, yes. They come through quite often, traveling between their holdings in the Blue Mountains off west and the Lonely Mountain in the east. I'm always interested in their news and anything they might have to sell. What news do travelers bring lately? Lately, their talk has been pretty dark. All about wars brewing and even about the... about Mordor and all. Frightening talk to listen to, I'll admit. And are you frightened? Me? Heavens no. What does there in Bree that the Dark Lord would be interested in? We mind our own business and no one bothers us. That's the way it's always been. You should be frightened. All of Middle-earth is falling under the shadow. Bree will be no exception. No. Now you're just trying to scare me, aren't you? Why, I doubt this Dark Lord even exists, outside of tales told to keep misbehaving children in line. So, um, was there something you wanted? Welcome. What can I do for you? This isn't the Shire, but you're a hobbit. Why, of course I am. Bree is the oldest settlement of hobbits in the world, you know. And this is the only place you find hobbits and big folk living together. An arrangement that suits us both just fine. Odd sort of shop to find in a town like Bree. <laughs> That's what my neighbors are always telling me. I'm sure half the town thinks I'm completely cracked, but I've always loved old tales of adventure and daring deeds, so it's only natural I would open a shop selling weapons and armor and whatnot. And is this profitable? Oh, heavens no. But you see, my old dad was quite well off, and he left me a tidy sum. This is really more of a hobby than a business, but it could prove useful to someone like you. Take a look around. What news do travelers bring lately? Lately, their talk has been pretty dark. All about wars brewing and even about the... about Mordor and all. Frightening talk to listen to, I'll admit. I'd best be on my way. Who could live in a town where it's always raining? It's depressing. You're a strong man, Bramble. You do well with us. Sounds good, but I don't know. I wouldn't want to hurt no one. Not real bad, anyway. You think they care about you? I say take what you want and the rest be damned. Well, what do you want, Dwarf? This is a private conversation. What was it you said about hurting people? Well, uh, it's just that this fellow and his friends are offering me a chance to, well, you know, be part of a gang. Shut your mouth, Harley Bramble. You don't have to spill your guts to every sooty-bearded coal miner that comes creeping into town. Coal miner? You best keep a civil tongue in your head, friend. And what if I don't? 
What are you going to do about it? I... You, you filthy dog. Have it your way for now. But I have friends, powerful friends. You'll soon be sorry. Mark my words, this old town will be sorry. Now, do you want the same lesson? M me? No, no, I don't. I, I don't even know him, really. He's a stranger here. Just come up from the south a week or two ago. I won't have anything more to do with him, I swear. Hmm. Make sure you remember that, or you'll answer to me. Hello there. Always good to deal with my own kind. The name's Groff, and I hail from the Blue Mountains. I don't think I've seen you before. Farin, at your service. My home is in Erebor, far to the east. Erebor? A lonely mountain? Then you're one of King Dane's folk. I hear good things about your people's stonework, and their wealth. Some of my kin once dwelt in your homeland. What can you tell me of it? The Blue Mountains are prosperous enough, although we find more iron than gold. We rely on iron working for our livelihood. That's why I'm here selling tools to the Brelanders. Picks and shovels are fine, but what about weapons? You make those as well. Of course. We make arms and armor as fine as any in Middle-earth. Good. I'd like you to bring some of them to Bree. These people have need of weapons. <laughs> You're pulling my beard. Weapons for these folk? They wouldn't know which end of the sword to hang on to. I might as well try selling shoes to hobbits. Peace never lasts forever. These people need to be prepared. Well now, if you're so eager to arm the Brelanders, how come you don't get your own folk to do it? I would, but Erebor is too far away. There are people here who see the danger growing. They want to be prepared. It'll take more than a few sensible folk to make it worth my time. These people are simple and peace-loving. It's plowshares they want, not swords. So they're not warriors. Is that any reason not to give them a fighting chance if trouble comes their way? Hmm. You're right, of course. Maybe it's not such a bad idea after all. At least I'd have no competition. All right, I'll do it. Excellent. How long do you think it will take? Some time, I'm afraid. It's a long trek to the Blue Mountains and back. Not to mention I'll have to convince my kin I've not lost my mind. Probably three months or more, I reckon. I will let them know when to expect you. Safe travels, Groff. Oh, if these folk knew the danger that threatens them, they'd never find the courage to leave their houses. Hello, is there something I can do for you? I have something here for you, lass. It's from Raleigh Appledore. A gift? From Rowley? But I thought that that is he. I I'm sorry, it's, it's just so unexpected. What is this gift? His mother's locket. A pretty thing it is, too. Oh, it's beautiful. But I don't understand. Why is he giving me this now? Because he is in love with you, lass. He wanted me to tell you so. Rowley loves me? Still? We were so close when we were children, but I thought he had forgotten all that. Forgotten? Oh no. You should see him fretting and fussing. It's almost pathetic, really. But this is wonderful news. Wonderful. Rowley's always had my heart. Always. The poor, simple, wonderful fool. But what about your father? He wants you to wed the smith. 
Leave my father to me. He may not be pleased with my decision, but I promise you he'll come round. He always does. <laughs> I see how it is. What would you like me to tell Rowley? Oh, please tell him I love him, and that we will find a way to be together always. Ha! Well said, lass. I'll tell him. Did you speak with Groff? What did he say? Will he bring us weapons? I changed his mind. He'll bring you weapons soon. Excellent. My only concern now is the time it will take. What if we need to defend the town before the dwarf made goods arrive? Maybe you could help me with that as well. How so? I can tell by your gear that you are no stranger to a fight. If you should have occasion to, well, let's say, recover any weapons you don't need, bring them to me and I will pay you for them. Pay me, huh? A better price than I might find elsewhere. I'm not a wealthy man, but I will give you what I can for any good weapons you bring me. I'll bear that in mind. Farewell. Hello. Have you brought me any extra weapons? You're back! Did you speak to Idona? What did she say? I'm dying to know. The last loves you, boy. Sure as anything she does. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. I can't thank you enough, my friend. I but, but wait, hang on. Oh, I completely forgot. Edmund must have charged you something for that repair. I owe you for that and for your trouble. Here, take what I have. I wish it could be more. Thank you, and good luck to you both. I can't thank you enough for bringing me Rowley's message. This changes everything. Everything! Happy to be of service. Luck be with you both. This is Fornost, yet I see no sign of the enemy. These ruins could hide a large army. We might even now be under the gaze of unfriendly eyes. Well, we came to provide a distraction for Aragorn, and what better way to do that than walking in the front door? Let's be about it. Yeah. Foul creatures! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
Stone seems weak. are not sound. We must find a way out of these pits. There's a hidden way through this wall. Ah! 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 Ah!
These goblins are small, but deadly all the same. Fear not! I will aid you! Thank you back, yes! be making those cries.
I thank you, friends. Without your timely arrival, my death would have been slow, but certain. No need to thank us. We're always happy to kill goblins. But who are you? I am called Belaram. My home is in the Misty Mountains, and I serve Gwaihir, Lord of Eagles. Who is it I have to thank for my rescue? I am Farin, a dwarf of Erebor, and King Dane is my lord. My friends here are Andriel and Eridan. Then I am indebted to you, Farin of Erebor, and to your friends. How did the goblins manage to capture you? I was careless, and the goblins were well prepared. They used war machines to fire bolts that exploded around me. I was stunned and fell from the sky. When I came to my senses, I was bound and helpless, even as you found me. What brought you to Fornos, Belaram? I often range far across the lands of the north, gathering news for Gwaihir, my lord. When I saw activity here in long-abandoned Fornost, I grew curious and flew lower to investigate. What did you see? Goblins and other foul folk are working within the ruins. They appear to be preparing for war, building siege engines and stockpiling arms. Have you seen any sign of the one who leads this rabble? I saw a tall man, heavily armored. The goblins obeyed his commands. Who he is, I cannot say, but he had an aura of menace, like one tainted by the shadow. That must be Agandar. You know this man? He serves the Dark Lord. We have a grudge to settle with him. I will assist you, but it will be perilous. The enemy has positioned war machines upon the inner wall. They limit my ability to fly freely. If we could gain the top of the wall, we might be able to destroy these machines. Beyond those doors, you will find a passage and stairs leading up to the wall. The machines are certain to be heavily guarded. We could be walking into a trap. I will take to the air and draw their fire. If we are fortunate, that will allow you to gain the top of the wall unobserved. Good. Let's get after them.
the top of the wall. Now to find and destroy the war machines. And quickly. Bellarom is in danger. Mind the edge. It's a long way down.
The wall is clear. Well done. I am free to fly unhindered. But there are others fighting in the city. They may need our help. Could it be Elrond's sons? I cannot say. But they move with stealth, and they leave a trail of slain enemies in their wake. That sounds like Eladan and Elro here on both accounts. They are likely heading for the Citadel, just as we are. Then let's push on. Maybe we'll meet up with them. I will shadow your movements from above. In open ground, I can strike against our foes. Call on me when the need is great. Welcome. I think more folks are starting to believe the dangers I warned of are real. But it's no wonder, really. What with the Black Riders appearing on our streets and attempted murder right here in the inn. Black Riders were in Bree? Yes, but Barleyman can probably tell you more than I. Pony. What can I do for you? What happened to Strider? He left town with a party of Shire Hobbits that came in just after you left. Seemed like an odd pairing, if you don't mind my saying so. They were strange folk, these Hobbits. Strange? In what way? Well, for one, they seemed to be in some sort of trouble. Even before they showed up, we had this... This black-cloaked rider come round asking after hobbits from the Shire. He put a chill into my veins, that one. He did. A black rider? What became of him? I can't say for certain, but more of them turned up after the first. They came into the town the same night as the hobbits. It was fortunate your friend Strider kept them hidden that night. Not long after, five of them broke down the gates and rode through the town, howling like a storm. Last anyone saw, they were traveling east. Thanks. Farewell. Welcome. What can I do for you? Welcome. I think more folks are starting to believe the dangers I warned of are real. But it's no wonder, really. What with the Black Riders appearing on our streets and attempted murder right here in the inn.
there. It's Eladan and Elro here. Ah! The elf twins can give us a hand! Quickly, we must follow after Eladan and Elro here. They may need our aid. We must find a way past this gate. Thanks for that, Balaram! There's a mounted crossbow over there. Bellarab could help us here.
I sense a hidden opening in this stone. Testing a troll in combat? That is no small feat, friends. It would appear that we are on the same side. Perhaps we could be of assistance to each other. Allow us to offer a hand. Andriel, is that you? Well met, my friends. We were told we might find you here. I am truly glad to see you. Allow me to introduce my companions, Eridan of the Dunedain and Farin of Erebor. I present to you Eladan and Elrohir, the sons of Elrond Hathaven. It is a pleasure to make the acquaintance of such skilled and courageous warriors. Was it the three of you then who freed the Great Eagle? 
Aye, Dalaram is his name. That was well done. But what brings you to Fornost? We were with the Rangers at Sarn Ford when we were attacked by Black Riders out of Mordor. We brought word to Aragorn in Bree, and he asked us to come here. That is grim news. But I fail to see why Aragorn chose to send you to Fornost. The Black Riders are in league with a man called Agandaur. He's in command of this force. I begin to understand. Aragorn wishes you to distract Agandaur. Yes, that is our mission. But now that we have joined forces, we can do more than distract him. Let us cut the head from this Serpent of Sauron. A fine idea. But how will we find him? He is certain to be in the Citadel at the heart of the city. We must attempt to make our way there. No easy task amid these crumbling ruins, and a host of orcs and goblins will seek to bar our way. If we are separated, press on toward the Citadel. There we will regroup for our final attack. All right. Let's go. Follow us! Stay close to us! They have a mounted crossbow! Take cover! Beware! Goblins! We will search this way while you three try another route. We will meet at the Citadel, if not before.
over there what manner of creatures are these can they actually be so enamored of the darkness that they would willingly destroy themselves to strike at their enemies this is troubling There's a mounted crossbow there. They use dark magic to shield themselves. We must close with them. There's a lever over here. This gate jammed. It'll take a while to get it open. see a way to reach it. They found us again. Here they come! Feel my wrath! And this is bad! These creatures are more formidable than those we faced before. Agandar's minions! 
Minions! have the high ground. Welcome. I think more folks are starting to believe the dangers I warned of are real. But it's no wonder, really. What with the Black Riders appearing on our streets and attempted murder right here in the inn. You've been very helpful. I think we have a good store of arms now. I know you haven't helped us for the money, so I want to show you my appreciation. I found this amulet many years ago on the Barrow Downs. I've always suspected it has some special virtue. Maybe it will be of use to you. My thanks. Good luck to you.
can arm the town should the need arise. There's a hidden passage in this wall. There's a lever over here. Clear.
Well fought, friends! We will open this gate! We will meet at the Citadel! Good fortune! There's the Citadel, just up ahead. We're not there yet. Stay close. There's a mounted crossbow over there. Can't do that yet. There are more by the wall! Ah, they won't have the advantage for long. Bring down the fire barrel first! Again! Archers have the high ground. Oh, save you! Ah! 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 
finishes then. Let us continue on. <laughs> Dower must be within, then that is where we must go. The way is barred by a powerful magic ward. Can you break the spell? Perhaps, but it will take time and concentration. You'd best get started. We will guard you while you work. for a time, my friends, for I cannot follow you within those narrow halls. Will you depart for your home, Belleron? No, lady. It would be faithless of me to say farewell while friends' lives yet hang in the balance. I will await your return. It may be that I can prevent reinforcements from following you into the tower. We'd best hurry. The elves are getting ahead of us. May fortune favor you all. Huh? <gasps> 
out there invaders how many not many but they freed the eagle fools now our presence here will be revealed is this the best your rabble can do they must be great warriors bloody handed elves or some of those filthy tarts. i don't care find them and kill them call out your guards don't let them escape Guard and be quick about it!
It is no use. He has escaped us for now. Yes, but you cannot be blamed. It was bold of you to go after him alone. Indeed, though, perhaps it was not the wisest course. He summoned a storm! How can a man wield such power? Sauron is a master of dark sorcery. He has taught these arts to mortals before. It may be that Agandar learned at the hand of the Dark Lord himself. It is worse than Agandar alone. We faced orcs in the ruins below that cast spells against us. Never before have I encountered orcs who use sorcery. This could mean Agandar has passed his knowledge on to others. Even to the orcs. That would be a great evil, even for one such as he. What was that beast he made his escape on? I cannot say. I have never seen nor heard of its like before today. Nor have I. Perhaps the Dark Lord has bred these creatures as a challenge to my folk. I can only wonder how many of these beasts he has placed at Agandar's command. We've got to find out where he's heading. Any ideas? It is difficult to say. It might be anywhere. The Ettenmoors, Wilderland, the far north. He may even return to Mordor. That seems unlikely. He made threats against the north. Yes, you are correct. And I fear he has the means to carry out those threats. Agandaur is a threat to all the free folk of the north. We must destroy him or die trying. Yes, but first we must find him, and that will not be easy. He could be anywhere. For my part, I would gladly join in the hunt for Agandar. Yet, I have my duty to consider. I must return home to inform Lord Gwaihir of all I have learned here. And who is Gwaihir? He is the Lord of the Eagles of the Misty Mountains. I am surprised you do not know the name, for he was a friend to your kinsman, Thorin Oakenshield, and to your own lord, Dane Ironfoot. Oh, hi. The King of the Eagles is indeed a revered friend of my people. As his vassal, I am duty-bound to return to him. He must be informed of everything I have learned here. Aye. Your duty to your people must come first. I'm glad we met, Belarab. I hope we will meet again one day. As do I, Farron of Erebor. You and your comrades saved my life. That is something I will not forget. If I can ever be of service to you, I will. Farewell wherever you fare, Belaram. Till your Aerie receives you at your journey's end. My thanks! Commend me to Elrond, your father, and farewell. As for us, I believe we also have a duty to inform our allies of all we have learned. For me, that means a return to Sanford. Halbarad, my captain, will be eager to hear our news. Yes, we cannot say what forces still threaten the Shire. The Rangers may have need of us. Should you find Halbarad has no pressing need of your services, I would urge you to make your way to Imladris. We may have need of your strength and resourcefulness before long. I do not know this place, Imladris. Ah, your pardon. You know it better as Rivendell. There are still some goblin skulls down below in need of cracking. Shouldn't we deal with them? Goblins are only a threat when they have a strong leader to drive them on. With their chieftain slain and Agandar fled, those few who remain in Fornost will soon fall to squabbling among themselves. And we may find more important tasks awaiting us elsewhere. But what about Aragorn and the hobbit he was looking for? He's probably got his hands full with the Black Riders and all. Shouldn't we try to help them? If Aragorn has found this hobbit, it is certain they will both be bound for Imlantris. He is several days ahead of us now. We shall look for him as we go, but Aragorn is resourceful. I suspect he will arrive at Imlantris before we do. Then we best head back to Sarn Ford. Farewell for now.
I have received word through the Sons of Elrond and the Wandering Companies telling of your valor at Fornost. You are to be commended for your skill and daring. There are so few rangers left here now. It might be dangerous to remain. What if the Black Riders should return? Maybe we should retreat. That would be the wise course if I thought they would return. But I am certain they did not come this far merely to slaughter a small band of Dunedai. No, I will remain here with the few we have left. We cannot hope to fight the enemy, but we still have eyes and ears to gather news of their movements. Have you heard anything of Aragorn? He was desperate to find a certain hobbit when we parted from him in Bree. All I know is that Aragorn is rumored to have left Bree in the company of four hobbits of the Shire. I can only assume one of them is the hobbit he was seeking, and that they are now bound for Rivendell. There is worse news, however. On the night before they departed, the Prancing Pony Inn came under attack by unknown assailants. That sounds bad. He might need our help. Hmm. That was my thought as well. But if he is being pursued, Aragorn will take pains to cover his trail. Even a tracker as skilled as Aradan would be unlikely to find him. Well then, what should we do? I advise you to make your way to Rivendell. Aragorn will be eager to hear news of Agendaur, and he may have other tasks for you to perform. For now, the enemy seems to have turned away from the Shire. These Black Riders, the Nazgul, they've come a long way from Mordor. Aragorn hinted something big drew them here. Maybe you could tell us more? I do know why they're here, but it is not for me to pass that knowledge on to others. Perhaps Aragorn or Elrond will tell you more when you reach Rivendell. Me? Travel to Rivendell? Hmm. The hospitality of Elrond is legendary, and it's not like I have a better suggestion. Why not? But it's a long road between here and there. We best get started. Perhaps there is something you can do for me on your way. You have but to name it. I sent two of my rangers, Kalarin and Lewin, on patrol along the Brandywine River. They should have returned long before now. I am growing concerned for them. They are both seasoned rangers who have served many years in this region. We can be certain they have not simply lost their way. From which direction would you expect them to come? They were to follow the Brandywine north as far as the Great East Road, and from there to make their way back by passing through the Barrow Downs. The Downs are just north of our position here. Then we'll make our way north by way of the Barrow Downs. Perhaps we will discover some trace of them as we travel. You have my thanks. Eridan has great skill as a tracker. If Lewin and Kalaran made it as far as the Downs, he will likely pick up their trail. Farewell and safe travels to you all. You're soon to be off again, are you? Well, I have a few things among our supplies that may help you on your way. Perhaps a few extra arrows for your quiver, and a few of Solana's healing drafts may come in very handy as well. Take a look. It was a grim day when those Black Riders attacked. What do you make of it all? Ah, well... I've seen many things in my day. Evil in many forms. But I've never seen anything like we faced that day. So many lost. It's hard for an old man to see so many younger men slain. I wish I could... Well, there's nothing to be gained from wishing. But there is something to be gained from action. We must have our revenge. Revenge? That's all well and good. But those men will still be dead, won't they? Better that we do whatever we can to save others from their fate. I'll do what I can to protect the living, but I'll also avenge the fallen. This, I swear. 
You've a fierce spirit. I hope it sustains you in the days ahead. But now you have a long and dangerous journey before you. You must be prepared. Take a look at the stores I have on hand. Keep well, Maradon. Ah, Master Farin. It's good to see you back. I thought you'd be on your way back to the Lonely Mountain by now. And who could blame you were that so? We dwarves have a saying. Faithless is he who says farewell when the road darkens. I came here to help protect the Shire, and that's what I intend to do still. They say it is hard to change the mind of a dwarf. I, for one, am glad of that. Are you hurt? You look well enough to me. If it's healing drafts you need, you can get them from Maradon. I have a dying man on my hands. Oh, he looks terrible. What's wrong with him? Wrong? I don't really know. His wound is minor, yet his life is slipping away. I fear he is suffering from the Black Breath. The Black Breath? What is that? It is some power wielded by the Black Riders, the Nine Nazgul. Their victims are stricken senseless, and without aid, they soon die. I've already lost three men to this curse. Eleron is the only victim who yet lives. Is there nothing we can do? Uh, I hardly know. Drawing an arrow, stitching a wound, these things I have done countless times. The Black Breath is something I know only from the old rhymes my teacher taught me. An old rhyme? Well, let's hear it then. It was years ago. Let me think. I believe it ran something like this. When the Black Breath blows, and Death's shadow grows, and all lights pass, come Athalus, come Athalus, life. To the dying. <sighs> That's all I can recall. Hmm. What's this Athalus the rhyme speaks of? An herb, commonly known as King's Foil. It has little medicinal use, though some find it comforting for headaches and other small complaints. Seems worth a try. Have you no Athalus? No, I have none. You'll have to forgive me for neglecting to lay up a supply. But you see, no one bothered to tell me that the Nine Ring Wraiths would rise up from ancient legends to trouble us here. If I had a Thalus, don't you think I would have used it by now? A Thalus has to grow somewhere. Any chance I could find some before it's too late? Perhaps you could find some at that. The plant is not native to Middle-earth. It was brought to these shores from lost Numenor and planted in the lands where our ancestors used to dwell, including the Borodans to the north. How will I know a Thalus, should I come across it? The plant has many long, smooth leaves, but you might best find it by its scent, a sweet, pungent fragrance. The Borodans hold precious few such plants. My road leads to the Borodans. If I find a Thalus growing there, I'll bring some back to you.
I'm told the Barrow Downs are filled with ancient tombs. What do you know of them, Elf? These tombs were made by the fathers of men in the depths of time. They were sacred to the men of Arnor, and they too buried their dead here, until their kingdom fell to the Witch King. These hills have an evil reputation in the folklore of the Shire and Bree, but rangers travel here often without incident. Still, I feel a sense of unease. We must stay alert.
pretty obvious now. I felt the missing rangers. As long as there is a chance they still live, I won't give up the search. like there's writing on these stones, but it's very warm. Can your elven eyes make it out, War Master? Faintly. It appears to be a list of names, many of them scratched in haste. They are identified as soldiers of Cardalon. The men of Cardalon were among the last of my ancestors to hold out against the evil of the Witch King. The histories tell us that they used the Barrow Downs as their last refuge in a hopeless fight. Then this must be where they laid their fallen comrades to rest. It would be fitting you to drive the Whites from this tomb.
weak.
short work of this barrier. Ah, there's a poor excuse for a hidden door. Let me see what you have found. Yes, this is indeed a Thalus. Now, according to the old law, all I need to do is add these leaves to boiling water. Let Eleron breathe in these fumes. Selana? And our dwarven friend as well. How can this be? I thought you were all slain. But no. That was only the dark voices in my dreams. Yet, it was not all a dream, was it? A dream? More like a nightmare. The Black Riders cut us down like sheep. Only a handful survived. This is not the time to trouble the lad with tales of this sort. He needs rest, not new sorrows. No, it's all right. It's best I know the truth. At least not all were lost. That gives me hope. You held your ground when others fled. You're a brave man. I tried to do my part, but I'm afraid I was not much use. I remember being scared mostly. And then the darkness fell. I thought it was the end of all things. It's a good thing Salana here knew how to save you. Mine was the knowledge, but it was this brave dwarf who found the herb that saved you, at great personal risk. Then I owe you my life, friend. Please, let me show my appreciation. 
My weapons were made in lost Numenor in the distant past. They've been in my family for generations. I want you and your friends to have them now. Numenor? I've never heard of that land. Numenor was the land of my ancestors. A great civilization. But it sank beneath the sea thousands of years ago. Only a handful of survivors, led by Elindil, escaped here to Middle-earth. And who was this Elendil? A mighty lord of Numenor. It was he who founded the realms of Arnor and Gondor long ago. Our chieftain Aragorn is his heir. Hush, boy. You forget that we Dunedain still keep our secrets. Yes, I'm sorry, I grew careless. Uh, forget I spoke. But come, my friend. Will you accept my gifts? My thanks. It is a fine gift. You'd best rest now. Farewell to you both. Are you in need of supplies? I have a few things here for you to look at. Or maybe you've picked up a few things along your way that we can use here. If so, I'll gladly take it off your hands. We've been living pretty lean here lately. Good to see you again. How have things been here? Ah, uh, well... We had the sad task of laying our slain brothers to rest. But there has been no sign of the enemy since that day. Perhaps they found whatever it was they were seeking. Or perhaps they're searching for it elsewhere now.
this blade. It belonged to Kalaran. This is proof your comrades were here. Where are they now? The tracks show where two bodies were dragged to the entrance of that large barrel. Were they living or dead? That I cannot say. The only way to discover their fate is by following them.
think he's alive. Come on then, Lewin. Time to awaken. Wake up! No strength can prevail against this sickness. What good are swords in the face of this plague? What, what, what's in the name of... Eridan? Yes, it's me, my friend. I... have been dreaming. What was all that about a plague? I... I don't know. It was as if I was someone else. I remember a... plague... and despair. The Great Plague. Nearly 300 years ago, it devastated the Dunedain of this region. You were sharing the dreams of those for whom this tomb was made. Well, let those dreams remain with the dead. I want no more of them. How did you end up in this darksome hole? I recall we were making good speed through the Downs, eager to return to our friends. But a fog began to rise and it became hard to find our way. We began to hear voices calling to us, as if from far off, or else underground. And then, the dead were all around us. We, we fought them, but then I felt the presence of something else, something stronger, more evil. I saw a shadowy figure seize hold of Kalaran, and he fell senseless. Then it came for me. That is all I remember. But if I was brought living into this tomb, then the same would be true for Kalaran. We need to find him. Let's go before any more dead things decide to turn up.
sorry about what happened to your comrade, Lewin. Are you going to be all right? First Black Riders, now Barrow Whites. This is more than men should have to contend with. <sighs> but where there is life, there is hope. Thanks for your concern, but I will be all right. I owe it to those who have fallen to go on as best I may. We've gathered some rich treasures from this tomb. You certainly deserve a share. Thanks, but it would only serve to remind me of... all of this. You keep what you have won. The Barrow Whites have been driven out, and the way back to the surface is clear. You should be able to make it on your own now. Good luck and goodbye, Lewin. Master Elrond, allow me to present to you Farin of Erebor, a very valiant dwarf. Indeed. It is an honor to welcome one so brave to my home, and your companions as well. I am grateful for what you did at Fornost. If Agandar's forces had joined in the hunt, there is little chance that I and my charges would have made it here to safety. My thanks. Are you the lord of these halls? Yes, I am Elrond Half-Elven, Lord of the Refuge of Imladris, or as you know it, Rivendell. I'll admit I'm surprised a dwarf can find so warm a welcome in the hall of an elf lord. Conflicts there have been between our folk in the past, but you are one of the trusty folk of Durin's line. More often than not, your people and mine have been allies and friends. Happy to have been of service. Can you tell me what happened to you after we parted company? I found the hobbit Frodo Baggins and his companions and led them through the wilderness, hoping to throw the Nazgul off our trail. All the same, five of them attacked our camp at Weathertop, and Frodo was badly wounded. After that, the enemy pursued us almost to the hidden pathways of Rivendell itself. We never would have saved Frodo, except that we had the help of Elrond and his people. How did you manage to escape them? The river of this valley is under the power of Elrond, and it will rise in anger when there is need to bar the ford. As the Black Riders attempted to pursue Frodo across the river, they were swept away in a great flood. Ha! Huh. So that takes care of the Black Riders, then? No, ringwraiths cannot be so easily destroyed, but we can hope they were unhorsed and uncloaked. Without their mounts, they are crippled, and will be forced to make their way back to Mordor as best they may. I've never heard tell of creatures the like of these Black Riders. What are they? They were once mortal men, great lords, warriors, and sorcerers. They were ensnared by Sauron, who lured them with promises of wealth and power, and gave to them rings of power. But they were deceived and quickly became slaves of the Dark Lord's will. They ceased to live as men long ago, and now exist only as wraiths. They are shadows, invisible and immaterial, given shape only by the robes they wear, yet their power to inspire terror and their mastery of dark sorcery makes them terrible foes. I still can't make out why the enemy would send his most terrible servants all the way from Mordor just to hunt for a hobbit. 
I think it is time we told our newfound friends what they have gotten themselves into. Kandalf, I should have known you would be involved with this somehow. Indeed. Wherever there is trouble and strife and the enemy is stirring, there you will find Gandalf the Grey. I believe I have begun to glimpse the truth, yet I would gladly hear your explanation, Mithrandir. You have more than earned such an explanation. Tell me, what do you know of Isildur's Bane? Isildur's Bane? Isn't that another name for the Ring of Power? Quite right. The Ring of Power. The One Ring. The Ruling Ring. After lying lost and nearly forgotten for centuries, Sauron's Ring has once again been found. Do you mean to say the Hobbit Aragorn rescued has come into possession of the Dark Lord's Ring? Aye, that would explain those accursed Black Riders. But what is to become of the Ring now? There is no safe resting place for the Ring, not even here in Imladris. It is a danger to all who come near to it. There is only one course left to us. The Ring must be destroyed. To do so, the Ring will need to be cast into the same fires from which it was forged. Those of Mount Doom, in the land of Mordor. The Hobbit, Frodo Baggins, has agreed to take it there. It cannot be that you will send a halfling alone and unaided into Mordor. No, certainly not. A fellowship will be formed. A fellowship of nine. Nine walkers set against Sauron's nine black riders. Among this fellowship will be representatives of all the free peoples of the world. Elves, dwarves, and men. Pedagorn and I will both be going. We've proven we can handle a fight. Let us join this fellowship of yours. The hope of the Company of the Ring lies in speed and secrecy, not in strength of arms. Their number must be few. Even were we to send a thousand such warriors on this journey, it would do little more than arouse the wrath of the Dark Lord. We are at your command. Tell us what we can do. The Nazgul and Agandaur are dire threats. We must learn all we can of their movements before the Fellowship is to depart. Scouts will be sent out in every direction to scour the lands around Rivendell. Your aid in this would be of great service to our cause. Very well. Where should we start? Agandaur is our chief concern. Although the Nazgul are powerful foes, their mission here in the north is abundantly clear. We can only guess what Agandaur may be planning, or where he went after he escaped from you. I suspect he may be planning to move against us here. Sauron's hatred of the Elves is very great, and he does not forget the hand we played in his defeat during the War of the Last Alliance. If it is strength he wants, he may well find it among the Ettenmoors. Do you know that region better than I? What can you tell me of the Ettenmoors? The Ettenmoors are a spur of the Misty Mountains, lying almost directly north of Rivendell. It is a wild region of very rugged terrain, home to many trolls and giants. I myself was in the Ettenmoors but days ago. I saw no sign of Agandaur's presence. But neither did I encounter trolls. That fact alone is troubling. It could be that they are gathering in force, somewhere among the moors. If that's so, we don't want them taking us by surprise. We'll make our way to the Ettenmoors and see what we can find out. From what I have heard of you, from Aragorn and Elrond's sons, I expected no less. Still, you have had a long road and hard fighting to get this far. Take what time you need to rest and recover before you set out. The Atten Moors are a dangerous place for the unprepared. The hospitality of my house is yours for as long as you wish. Greetings to you, Farin. Many times in the past have I welcomed your kin to my home. The bond between our kindred has at times been shaken, yet it has never been broken. 
Always before, I have placed my trust in Durin's folk, and never have they betrayed it. You will always be welcome here in Imladris, my friend. Yet I am certain you did not come here merely to exchange pleasantries. That is not the Dwarven way. Do you have questions for me? I found this scroll at Fornost. I think maybe you should take a look at it. A wise decision. This is writ in the black speech of Mordor, a language I will not utter here. It is intended to instruct the reader in the use of dark sorceries. What is the black speech? The language devised by Sauron when he desired a single tongue to be spoken by all who serve him. He had small luck introducing it to the scattered tribes of orcs and trolls, but it is still used by his highest-ranking servants. We faced orcs at Fornost who used spells against us. Then it seems this has already been put to use. That is grim news. The Dark Lord is a master of necromancy and other foul sorceries. He has taught these abominations to men in the past, but never, to my knowledge, to orcs. I don't like the sound of that word, necromancy. What is it? Necromancy is the darkest form of sorcery. It deals with raising the dead. The Dark Lord has this power? He does indeed. It was for this reason he was known as the Necromancer, when he still dwelt in the fortress of Dol Guldur in Mirkwood. At that time we did not know this was Sauron returned, but we knew there was a great evil there. Have you not experienced this power firsthand in your journey through the Barrow Downs? It was Sauron's chief servant, the Witch King, who summoned the Barrow Whites to infest those tombs. I was told that many of the men buried in those tombs were the Dúnedain. How is it that Sauron can make them forget their past loyalties? These shades are not truly the dead returned to life. Not even Sauron has that power. It is accomplished through the summoning of malignant spirits to inhabit the remains of the dead. It is a mockery of life, and the foulest form of desecration. Good thing we captured this, then. What will you do with it? I will destroy this scroll, at the very least. But wait, here I discover more. Listen to what is written herein. Scribed by the hand of Agandaur, disciple of the great Lord Sauron, for the empowerment of his servant Wolfren and those others of his faithful who prove worthy. I will speak no more of these blasphemies, but it does say that this scroll is one of seven such works. Who is this Wolfren the scroll speaks of? I know not, but whoever he may be, he is certain to be deep in the sway of the Dark Lord, and very likely a powerful sorcerer in his own right. We must be watchful for any sign of his presence in the days ahead. Seems like Agendauer could have written a whole lot more than just seven. Perhaps. But creating something of this nature is not a matter of simple scribing. Considerable preparation and effort is involved. We have reason to hope there are no more than seven. So there are six more of these accursed things. Maybe we can find them all. That would be a great service to our cause. Should you recover them all, bring them to me, and I will ensure they are destroyed. Why bring them back? I can burn up any I find the moment I get my hands on them. You will find that works of this sort are not so easily destroyed. There are strong wards placed upon them that protect them from mundane harm. But I have the necessary skill to remove these wards. Should you gather the remaining scrolls, bring them to me, and I will see them destroyed. You can count on that. In the meantime, please accept this in appreciation for bringing this matter to my attention. Perhaps it will be of service to you in your travels. One more thing. I found this book hidden away in the ruins of Fornost. It looks to be quite old. Ah, now this is writing of an altogether more wholesome sort. This was not made by any minion of Sauron, but rather by the men of Arthodyne, 
likely before the fall of Fornost. Tell me about this realm of Arthodyne. Arthodyne was the last fragment of the great northern kingdom of Arnor. The heirs of Isildur ruled as kings of Arthodyne until it too was destroyed by the enemy. But according to the rangers at the Sarn Ford, the line of their kings did not end. It is true Isildur's line has remained unbroken. But without a kingdom to rule, they have not claimed the title of king and have been known simply as chieftains of the Dúnedain. It is our friend Aragorn who currently bears that title, although he will be the last to do so. Either he will become a king, or Isildur's line will come to an end with him. So you think this book is a record from those days? You could be right, for we found it in a chamber that had been long sealed. Can you make out any of the writing? Indeed. It seems to be a personal journal. And here is a name inscribed. M. A. L. Why, this appears to be a work of Malbeth, the seer of Arthodyne. Malbeth? Never heard of him. Many of the Dúnedain race are gifted with foresight, but none more than Malbeth. He predicted the final destruction of the kingdom of Arthodyne, which befell exactly as he had foretold. I will examine this work carefully. Who knows what other visions are here recorded? It may be that we will find something of value to us in this time of trouble. You did well in bringing this to me. Take this in way of thanks. Is there anything more you can tell me about this mission to the Ettenmoors? Only that the Ettenmoors are a dangerous place at the best of times. The danger will be that much greater if the orcs and trolls are being organized by an outside force. You and your friends will need to have your wits about you. Who could raise such a muster? Agendaur would be my first guess, but it could also be a strong orc chieftain, or perhaps an unusually cunning troll. At worst, one or more of the Nazgul may have made their way there, if any of their mounts survived the flood we unleashed upon them. Whatever may be happening there, you will know of it. Farewell, Master Elrond. Ah, Farin. I am glad you are here. I feel I must apologize to you. When I was told a dwarf had appeared on the borders of the Shire asking to join the Dúnedain in their watch, I was suspicious. I instructed Halbarad to keep a careful eye upon you, fearing you were a spy. Clearly, he grew to trust you. And after all you have done, I have as well. I am sorry to have doubted you, my friend. Oh, there's no need to apologize. After seeing firsthand what you rangers have to contend with, I think you're right to be suspicious. Perhaps. But we should also remember there are others in the world who are willing to serve. I am glad you chose to do so. I'd like to know more about those chosen to be part of your fellowship. Who is it that interests you? Tell me about the Wood Elf, uh, Legolas. It is fitting that we have a representative of the Eldar, the Elves, along with us on this venture. 
They have been foes of Sauron since before the ancestors of the Dúnedain first returned to the shores of Middle-earth. Legolas is keen of eye and ear, and he is unmatched as a bowman. His arrows seldom miss their mark. What about this man of Gondor, this Boromir? Boromir is the son of Denethor, the steward of Gondor. I had never met him before Elrond's council, but long years ago, under another name, I served his grandfather Ecthelion. The men of Gondor are valiant and strong, and by all accounts Boromir is foremost among them in courage and skill at arms. I suspect we will have need of his sword before our quest is through. At least you will have a dwarf along with you, and one of the best too. You won't find a better companion than Gimli, son of Glowen. I have only just met Gimli, but I hope he will prove to be much like you, stout-hearted and reliable, and a terror to his enemies in battle. What about these other hobbits? Is it wise to send so many of the little folk on this quest? We are asking much of Frodo. Until recently, he had never set foot outside the confines of the Shire. It will be a comfort for him to have the familiar companionship of his friends and kin in the face of so much that will be new and frightening. I have traveled with these hobbits, and they proved far more courageous and hardy than many would suspect. What about Gandalf? What can you tell me of him? To know all there is to know of Gandalf would require a lifetime study. There is much about him that remains a mystery, even to me. Yet he is a relentless foe of Sauron and without his vigilance, the ring would already be in the hands of the enemy. His wisdom and leadership will be of great value to the Fellowship. So, you go now to claim the throne of Gondor. Above all, I go to help Frodo fulfill his quest. For unless the ring is destroyed, Gondor will soon fall, king or no king. I take it you'd never heard of Agandaur before we spoke of him. I had never heard nor dealt with Agandara specifically, but I know his kind. Years ago I served in disguise in the armies of Gondor, where I contended with the Corsairs of Umbaur, who were often led by those akin to Agandara. These black Numenorians are a corrupt and wicked race. They worship Sauron as a god, and seek the utter destruction of all who oppose him. Word is you have traveled a great deal. Is there anything you can tell me of the Etnors? Only that it is a dangerous and unforgiving place. My own grandfather, Arador, was slain by trolls in the Etan Moors. It is important we learn if the enemy is active in the Moors, but we do not send you there lightly. Be on your guard at all times while you venture there. Good luck to you. Ah, foreign. It is good of you to seek me out. You are a stout dwarf, like all of Durin's folk. And your courageous deeds have shown your worth. What's Agandaur after? There are no mighty kingdoms to be found on this side of the Misty Mountains. What's Sauron afraid of here? Sauron seeks dominion over all of Middle-earth. His desire is to order all things as he sees fit. Even were these lands empty from here to the sea, still he would seek to control them. There is power in Rivendell that could stand against him when all others fall, for a time. And this is something Sauron cannot allow. We had one of the great eagles lend us a hand at Claw at Fornost. Right handy he was, too. I was thinking he might help us get rid of the ring. I don't fault you for thinking along those lines. Why not beg a ride from an eagle, fly far out to the west, and drop the ring into the deepest part of the sea? Such ideas were debated at Elrond's council. But there are many things in the deep waters, and seas and lands may change. We cannot think of our time alone. We must destroy this thing forever. This orc lover, Agandaur. Do you know anything about him? Well, I know nothing of Agandaur himself. I have seen his kind at other times in distant lands. He is likely a black Numenorian, 
and a master of dark sorceries. I came all the way from the Lonely Mountain to help guard the Shire. Should I abandon what I set out to do? You fulfilled your oath and protected the Shire when you were needed there, my good dwarf. Now you're needed more urgently elsewhere. With the flight of the Ring in this direction, the enemy is looking this way and has forgotten the Shire for now. For now. But eventually his eye will turn once again toward the Shire, as humble as it is. Hobbits as miserable slaves would please him far more than hobbits happy and free. And there is such a thing as malice and revenge. Sauron will leave the final devastation of the Shire to his servant Agendower. And that is yet another reason why you must find him and put an end to his designs. In opposing Agendower, you are defending the Shire. When we first spoke, you said you recently passed through the Ettenmoors. Can you tell me anything more of them? It is a rough and empty land, home to many trolls. I passed through with great haste, for I needed to reach Rivendell as quickly as I could. You said there was no sign of trolls. I saw neither trolls nor fresh signs of them, and that disturbs me more than encountering one. I doubt they've all packed up and left. Mindless brute creatures they may be. Yet they can be used and driven to even greater wickedness by a strong enough hand. Agendower could well be forming them into an army. Do you think he's mustering the trolls for an attack? That is my fear. I would gladly be proven wrong. But my heart misgives me that somewhere in the Ettenmoors, you will find them gathering and being prepared for war. We must know. Such a force could be sent against Rivendell, perhaps in hopes of capturing the Ring. I'll get my friends and we'll head for the Moors. If there's something to find, we'll find it. The sun shines and all is fair and peaceful here in Elmatris. A far cry from the blood and dust of Fornost, is it not? You and your companions did very well there. Indeed, things might have gone badly for us had you not been there. You have earned some time to recover from the toils of battle and hard travel. And I believe you will find no place better for the restoration of body and spirit than this, our home. What was it that brought you to Fornost? We often ride far afield hunting the orcs wherever we may find them. We came upon signs of a large band of goblins making their way from the orc hold of Mount Gram and followed their trail to Fornost, where we lost no time in attacking them. I take it you often join forces with Aragorn? Yes, we often venture forth in company with the Dúnedain, and none more frequently than Aragorn. He was raised here in our household, after all. How is it that a man was raised here among elves? It is a tradition for the heirs of Isildur to be fostered in the House of Elrond. We have sheltered all the chieftains of the Dúnedain from the time the Northern Kingdom ceased to be down to this present day. Aragorn is the sixteenth in line from father to son to spend his early years in Imladris. This is one reason why the bond between the elves and the Dúnedain is so strong. Will you tell me more about your family? I know Elrond is your father. Yes, it was he who established the refuge of Imladris. My brother and I have dwelt here all our lives. Our sister Arwen dwells here as well although she has spent many years in the company of our grandmother. And your mother, does she dwell here also? Our mother has crossed the sea and left Middle-earth. It is a bitter tale to tell. Many years passed, on a journey across the Misty Mountains, our mother was captured by orcs. We searched the mountains without rest until we found her at last. 
Our father was able to heal her injuries, but the memory of her torment was too terrible for her to bear. At last she chose to depart for the Undying Lands. Perhaps now you understand why our hatred for the Orcs is so great. That's an awful tale to hear. I shouldn't have brought it up. No, my friend. We have drawn swords together in the same cause. You have earned our trust. We do not wish to keep anything hidden from you. This is the evil that we have pledged our lives to destroy, just as you have. I may need a few things before I'm ready to set out. Can anyone here help me with that? If it is provisions or other supplies you need, you should speak with Alare. And if your arms and armor need tending, seek out Angmir. Both of them may be found nearby. I may... If it is provisions or other... And if your arms and armor... Farewell, and luck be with you. Gimli, son of Glowen! This is a happy meeting. But what brings you to Rivendell? What has passed for good or ill since I left the mountain? Aye, and it's good to see you again, kinsman. I've heard of your exploits at Sarnford and Fornast. They sing your praises here. After you left to aid in the protection of the Shire, the foul messenger from Mordor returned yet again with more threats. King Dane thought it best to seek advice from Elrond. He chose Glowen to speak for him. When my father set out, I refused to be left behind, as happened with Thorin's quest. You were there at the Battle of the Five Armies, while I was left to cool my heels at the hearthside. Well, not this time. I go with the Hobbit Frodo and his chosen nine, even if one of them must be a Wood Elf. Who's this Wood Elf you spoke of? It's a long way from the forests of Mirkwood. Legolas is his name a fair-haired princeling and son to King Thranduil. Elrond has chosen him to represent the kindred of elves in Frodo's party. His purpose in Rivendell was to report that they'd let a prisoner escape. An easier escape than my father had when they held him in their dungeons. Another sturdy dwarf is what you need in your company. I should go in place of the elf. I, we would prove a mighty vanguard, and none would stand before us. Baruch Hazard! But Legolas has been chosen to go for the kindred of elves, and it's not for Gimli, Glowen's son, to argue with the likes of Elrond. Even so, Farron, you're needed here. These tidings from the north fill me with worry, and I like not what I've heard of this Agandaur. The Battle of Five Armies was long and terrible, and many valiant lives were lost. Glories of little use to the dead. You say it as one who has won a share of glory and lived to tell of it, and doubtless will do so again. Don't begrudge me this chance to show the worth of a dwarf against hopeless odds. <sighs> but in truth, it's not for glory I take this road. It's for the sake of all who lie under the shadow of the enemy. It's Frodo who bears the true burden. I know little of hobbits. What think you of this Frodo with such a burden to bear? I know that he's Bilbo's adopted heir, and that such great folk as Elrond and Gandalf regard him with honor. He's already come far with the ring, and endured the knives of those Nazgul. That's good enough for me. He's here about somewhere, if you wish to speak with him. We killed an orc chieftain and drove Agendaur from his stronghold. What worries you about the north? Before we left, we heard that Mordor was stirring up the Easterlings. But should they be foolish enough to move against King Brand of Dale, they'll find King Dane of Erebor standing fast at his side. But every step of the way here, we heard rumor of new gatherings of orcs and goblins and worse things. And though the fearful count every enemy twice, there may be some truth to it. You found such enemies at Fornast. When Sauron strikes, there will be more than one land that feels his wrath. I fear for the Shire and Rivendell, but my heart would rest more easily if I knew you kept watch over them. If Farron of the Lonely Mountain defends the North, then no enemy can prevail. <laughs> you don't ask much, but my friends and I will do what we can. If you can bear the honor of the Dwarves on your quest, I can do no less here. You have my word on it.
What, this kinsman? You dally in Rivendell when there's important work to be done. And if the scouts dally, so do we. I may be forced to go troll hunting in your place. Fare you well, kinsman. May we both find victory at the end of our roads. Hello. You are foreign, aren't you? I was hoping I would get a chance to speak with you. Aye, and you must be Frodo Baggins. Aragorn and Gandalf have told me all about you, and the burden you bear. Likewise, they have told me all about you. I wanted to thank you and your friends for all you did to keep us safe on our journey to Rivendell. Will you tell me about your journey here? Sounds as if it were a rough one. We had trouble almost from the start. The Black Riders were always just behind us, and we nearly met disaster in the Burrow Downs, at Bree, and again at Weathertop. You came through the Burrow Downs? I won't soon forget that accursed place. You were lucky to come out alive. That's no place for hobbits to go a-wandering. You seem to know a great deal about the Burrow Downs already. I'd prefer not to speak about what we found there. It is too horrible to dwell on, even here in the safety of Rivendell. What happened to you in Bree? We must have just missed crossing paths there. There were spies in Bree, and our room was attacked in the night. If Strider hadn't convinced us to sleep elsewhere, our journey would have ended then and there. What happened at this place called Weathertop? We were attacked by five of the Black Riders. I... I was foolish, and I put on the ring. One of them wounded me before Aragorn managed to drive them away. The knife that was used against me left a shard in the wound. From what Gandalf has told me, the fragment was working its way inward. If... if it had reached my heart, I would have become a wraith under the power of the Black Riders. Fortunately, we were able to reach Rivendell in time for Elrond's healing arts to save me. It is a little thing, this ring, but filled with mischief. Will you show it to me? No, I... I mean, I'm sorry, but Gandalf and Elrond have warned me against revealing the ring to anyone, even proven friends. I hope you understand. I... I think I do begin to understand. I shouldn't have asked. Forgive me. There is nothing to forgive. But the ring, it has a strange effect on everyone around it. It is better for it to remain hidden. It truly is a heavy burden you bear, Frodo. I hope you find strength and wisdom on the long road ahead. Farewell. Farin, my lad, by my beard, it's good to see you again. When you left Erebor to stand guard on the Shire, Gimli and I feared we might be seeing the last of you. Now I hear you stood with the rangers in the battle against the Nazgul at Sarn Ford, and bested an orc chieftain at Fornost. Good work! I can't take all the credit. I had Andriel, an elf of Rivendell, and the ranger Aradan at my back. Reminds me of the old days when dwarves, elves, and men fought together in the Battle of the Five Armies. Let's not leave out the eagles. They've been a big help to us. Well spoken. Thorin's quest and the Battle of Five Armies would have met disaster without the help of the Eagles. You're fortunate to have gained the friendship of such noble creatures. Your life may well depend upon your choice of friends, whatever kindred they be. Then I fear blessing being allied with an elf? I will speak plainly. I may be less than fond of King Thranduil's wood elves for keeping me in their dungeons, but I've no grudge with any of Elrond's folk. So I've heard you say many times, but the elves fought beside us when it mattered most. You're right, of course. I can be a stiff-necked old dwarf, but it's time to set aside grievances that were long ago repaid. When dwarves, men, and elves fought together at Erebor, we overcame legions of foes. But we face a far more terrible enemy in the Dark Lord. 
standing together against Agandar may be more than just a good idea. It may be our only hope to save the North. And besides, it wouldn't hurt to keep Sauron a little distracted. If we keep him second-guessing his plans for the conquest of the North, it could only help Frodo in the long run. That's my thoughts upon the matter, too. Be the stinging fly in the ointment, as it were. <laughs> only this fly's sting will be deadly. And it's time to be about your business. Goodbye, and good luck to you. Welcome, Dwarf of the Lonely Mountain. Welcome to Imladris. Are you in need of anything to help you in your travels? I have many things in my keeping that might serve you well. Imladris? Where is that? Your pardon. This is Imladris, the house of Elrond Hathelven. We who dwell here call it by that name, but it is more commonly known as Rivendell. What sort of folk dwell here in Rivendell? Elves, for the most part. My people have dwelt in Imladris for a very long time indeed. But there are other folk to be found here as well. Elrond welcomes all people of goodwill. The Dúnedain come often, your own folk come occasionally. We are even home to one special hobbit. Who is this hobbit you speak of? Why, it is none other than Bilbo the Magnificent, greatest of the Shire folk. Your folk know him well as the hobbit who overthrew the dragon Smaug and helped reclaim your lost realm of Erebor. Although these days he is more interested in poetry than adventure. And food and drink, of course. Keeping a hobbit well fed is enough to keep several stewards busy. <laughs> this is such a peaceful place. It must take a fair number of warriors to keep it so. This is a place of learning and peace, not a fortress or camp of war. But there are those here who wield great power, especially the Lord Elrond. Yet even he does not have the strength to overthrow the Dark Lord, or to resist him if he comes against us with great strength. I intend to do all I can to see that day never comes. Nobly spoken. I am told you have done great deeds on behalf of all free folk, and I am certain you will accomplish greater things still. But if you plan to contend with the enemy, you must be well prepared. Perhaps you should examine the stores we have on hand. What can you tell me about Elrond? To tell you everything I know of Master Elrond would take many days. Let it suffice to say that he is an elven lord of great and noble lineage. Ancient beyond mortal reckoning, and wise beyond measure. None are more skilled as a healer, or more versed in the lore of ages past. My thanks for the welcome, lady. Might I ask your name? No, indeed. I am Alare, one of Master Elrond's stewards. I help to manage the needs of his household, including arms and armor. I suspect you might have need of such things. I'm surprised to find elves who are so hospitable to a dwarf. Pleased, mind you, but surprised nonetheless. In other places there may be distrust between elf and dwarf, but all who bear no ill will toward the elves are welcome here. You have already done a great deal to aid our common cause, so I am happy to call you an ally and a friend. Oh, uh, it's an honor to be called friend by such a gracious... And beautiful, lady. <laughs> I was unaware that dwarves had such flattering tongues. Perhaps you should look at the stores I have on hand. Maybe you will find something else to catch your eye. I'd best be on my way. No, always happy to meet a dwarf, and one from the Lonely Mountain, if I'm not mistaken. Aye, I am Farron of Arabor, and we have met before, Bilbo Baggins. Have we now? Oh, I'm afraid I don't recall. But you'll have to forgive me. I've grown somewhat forgetful lately. 
We met upon your last visit to Erebor. I guess that was near 20 years ago now. And before that, I had the honor of sharing the field with you at the Battle of Five Armies. That was my first real taste of battle. I was hardly more than a lad at the time, but it was a glorious day. Oh, yes, the Battle of the Five Armies. A nasty business, that. Personally, I'm glad those days are behind us. But then again, it seems as if they may not be. Everything seems to be pointing to some dark times ahead. Speaking of which, I'm told that you and your friends did a great deal to help my Frodo and the Dúnedain reach Rivendell safely. You'll have to tell me all about it one of these days so I can write it down properly. This Frodo, he is your heir. But I had not heard that you had a son. Oh no, he's not my son. Actually, he's my first cousin once removed. And also my second cousin once removed. Well, it's, it's complicated, but we, we share a great-grandfather. The poor lad was orphaned at an early age, and so I adopted him. Made him my heir, all nice and legal, while simultaneously dashing the greedy hopes of my odious relations, the Sackville Baggins. <laughs> He's a good lad, Frodo. I only wish... I only wish he hadn't inherited my troubles along with my estate. I hope that Gandalf and the Dúnedain will keep him safe in the days ahead. The Dúnedain? Who do you mean? Why, Aragorn, of course. From the Elvish, Dún Adán, Man of the West. Numenorian. Around here, Aragorn is often known simply as the Dúnedain. A remarkable man, Aragorn, and a good friend. I almost wish that I could accompany him on his grand quest, but I'm far too old for adventures now. I only hope I will be spared long enough to write it all down. Can you tell me how Frodo came to hold the Ring of Power? Well, yes, that was through me, I'm afraid. I found the ring by happenstance while lost beneath the roots of the Misty Mountains. I won it. That is to say, I took it from the creature Gollum. Of course, I did not know the full story of the ring until only a few days ago. I thought it was merely a magical bauble with the power to make the wearer invisible. I only used it to avoid unwelcome visitors. Imagine that old ring of mine causing such a fuss. I would gladly take charge of it again if that would help. Oh yes. Gladly. Yes. You know, I think it would be best if we discussed something else. Now you call Rivendell your home. Well, the Shire will always be my home, I suppose. But this is the perfect place for so many things that I'm more than content to remain here. My days are mostly filled with my writing now. What is it you write? Oh, a little of this and a little of that. History, my past adventures, family trees. I've even begun a book of translations from the Elvish. Although lately I've been working on poetry mostly. Say, maybe you could help me with that. I'm writing a poem for Aragorn and I'm a bit stuck on a line or two. Are you now? Well then, let me hear what you have. Uh, very well, very well. Uh, the verse that's giving me trouble runs like this. Ahem. <clears throat> The light from the west is rekindled. Forth from Imladris it springs. Renewed is the hope that has dwindled. The light from the west is rekindled. Forth from Imladris it springs. Renewed is the hope that has dwindled. A bloody sword he swings! Oh, well... Yes. Yes, that would be one option, wouldn't it? It's apparent that you have more of the warrior than the poet in you, my friend. Yes, but we have more need of warriors now. Oh, I'm afraid you're right, but since these old hands are not much use with the sword, I'll just keep on with the pen. Though I'll need some help. Perhaps you could show this to the Lady Arwen. She has her people's gift with words, and this touches her deeply, after all. Arwen? And who is that? Why, she's Elrond's daughter, of course. 
and Aragorn's beloved as well. Although you didn't hear that from me, she's a sweet lady, and I'm sure she'd be willing to give me a hand with this. I'll take it to her. Ah, thanks very much. Uh, be sure to give her my compliments, won't you? I'll be sure to do that. Farewell, Bilbo. Hello again. This stay in Rivendell has done wonders for me. I almost feel like my old self. I'll leave you to rest. Goodbye. Even in strange surroundings, you can trust a dwarf to find his way to a forge. You are welcome in my smithy, Farin of Erebor. Seems like you're preparing for something. Can you tell me what you have planned? My fellow smiths and I are preparing for a great work. Soon we will be called upon to reforge the legendary sword Narsil. In the meantime, I've been sharpening my skills by practicing the art of imbuing gemstones. What can you tell me of this sword, Narsil? Narsil was the sword of Elendil, a mighty lord of the Dúnedain who defied the Dark Lord in the War of the Lost Alliance. He bore the sword in battle against Sauron, but he was slain and the sword was broken. Since that time, the shards of the sword have been an heirloom of the House of Elendil. It was to remain broken until the day when an heir of Elendil would go to war to reclaim the crown and title of king. That day will come soon, and the sword must be made whole once again. What do you mean by imbuing? Simply that certain objects have inherent virtues, and a skilled artisan can, through his craft, increase those virtues and bind them to an object for advantage. Gemstones are very strong vessels for this process. Sadly, appropriate gemstones have become difficult to find. The growing trouble throughout the land keeps travelers away, and our own people are staying closer to home. Maybe I can lend a hand with that. I'll be traveling soon. I would be pleased to have your help. I will provide you with a list of the types of gemstones that are of the greatest value to me. If you collect the stones, I am certain I could create something that you would find useful. But to be of use, the gemstones must be of the highest quality. Fortunately, we have as a guest a dwarf of the Lonely Mountain. Glowin is his name, and he is skilled in the appraisal of gems of all sorts. Once you have gathered the stones, allow him to examine them. He'll know if they are suitable. I should be going. Hmm. You don't look like any Elf of Rivendell. I'd wager you are one of the Wood Elves of Mirkwood. You are correct. I am Legolas, son of Thranduil, King of the Woodland Realm. And I believe you are a Dwarf of the Lonely Mountain. I've been through Mirkwood. It baffles me that you Wood Elves chose to live in such a place. Mirkwood is the greatest woodland in all of Middle-earth. It was called Greenwood the Great before the shadow of Sauron fell over it. In ages past, it was a place of great beauty. But now, it is filled with darkness and dread, save only in the north where my father's realm is maintained. What brought you on such a long and perilous journey? Unpleasant business. 
My father sent me to report the escape of Gollum, a creature Aragorn had entrusted to our care. What can you tell me about this Gollum? A pathetic creature who long held the Ring of Power. The evil of the Ring has left him twisted and tormented. His only thought is to recover what was taken from him. How did Gollum manage to escape? I understood you Wood Elves were pretty good at holding prisoners. But this one got away? Not from a lack of watchfulness, but perhaps from too much kindness. We occasionally allowed Gollum to go about the wood on the close guard. But on one of these ventures, the guards were attacked by orcs from Dul Guldur. In the confusion, Gollum escaped. We followed his track southward for many leagues, until it drew near to Dol Guldur. There, it became too dangerous to pursue him any further. Dol Guldur. A name of dread to my folk. What do you know of it? A stronghold of the enemy in the south of Mirkwood. It was once the dwelling of the Dark Lord, until he was driven out in the year of the Dragon's Fall. But it has once again become a place of great evil. All the darkness that besets Mirkwood has its source in Dul Guldur. So, will you be on your way back to Mirkwood soon? No. I have been chosen to represent Elvenkind among the Company of the Ring. I will be accompanying the halfling, Frodo Baggins, on his journey south. It seems a little strange that, with a house full of his own people to consider, Elrond chose you, a wood elf, to represent the elven folk in the Fellowship. I asked for the privilege, and Elrond did not refuse me. I feel he may have been relieved not to lose any of his household to this quest. He will have need of all his strength, should the enemy move against him, Nardris. Why'd you volunteer? Partially to make amends for the loss of Gollum, but more so because this will be the final chapter in our long struggle against the darkness, and I wish to have a hand in our final victory, or at least to stand in the forefront of our last act of defiance. Goodbye, Wood Elf. Farin. What can I do for you? What brought you? Unpleasant business. My father's... Goodbye. Hmm. You don't look like any elf of Rivendell. I'd wager you are one of the wood elves of Mirkwood. You are correct. I am Legolas, son of Thranduil, king of the Woodland Realm. And I believe you are a dwarf of the Lonely Mountain. That's right. I'm Farin of Erebor. Strange meeting a wood elf here, when I so seldom see them at home. It is true. The distance between our two realms is not great. Yet it seems we seldom have dealings with your folk. If things are cold between our folk, it is not the fault of the dwarves. Oh? I had not heard the fault lies with the elves. Oh, let me refresh your memory then. Your father imprisoned our king, Thorin Oakenshield, when he found him lost and starving in Mirkwood. Your Thorin refused to give a good account of himself. We who dwell in Mirkwood do not keep our borders safe by trusting every ragged wanderer who trespasses in our realm. So, now you insult one of our most revered kings? If I were not a guest in an Elf Lord's hall, I would have more to say about that. As usual, you overreact. Dwarves and their stiff necks. You may be useful allies at need, but I will never understand how anyone could be friends with a dwarf. Magovanen, well met and welcome to the safe haven of Imladris. My thanks. I'm much honored to meet you, Lady Arwen. Durin's folk are welcome here. You have endured great danger and given us urgent warning of a new threat to the North. For this, we honor you, Farin. Uh, um, well, it was nothing, Lady. It's nice of you fair folk to welcome a dwarf. You show the modesty worthy of a hero. 
Estelle and my brothers have spoken highly of your courage at Fornost, and I thank you for your part in seeing to my brother's safe return. Please, take your ease and rest a while in our halls. You will find all your heart could desire, whether it be food, drink, song, or storytelling. Bilbo asked for help with a poem. I'm fond enough of the dwarfish sort of poetry, but this elvish verse is beyond me. He asked for your help, saying the subject is a matter very close to your heart. Then it must be about Estelle. He is fond of writing verses in honor of his good friend, and therefore often comes to me for advice. You may leave it with me, Farin. I will give it some thought and answer him myself. Thank you. That's a relief. It's not for a dwarf to be writing lines about the kings of men. And anyway, I have little time to spare for poetry. Your father has asked me to scout the Ettenmoors. Then I will not keep you, but we may be of service to one another. I am helping my father brew a potion known as Miravol. One sip of Miravol can renew heart and soul and bring new vigor to weary limbs. I am in short supply of certain rare ingredients that may be found in the Ettenmoors. If I gave you a list of the ingredients, perhaps you could bring any you find while carrying out your mission. With enough ingredients, I will return the favor by brewing an extra flask that you may have for your own use. That's a generous offer, Lady Arwen. I'll keep an eye out for what you need and bring it back once I finish scouting around. Well met, Farin. It is good of you to visit me again. My thoughts stray often to Estelle and my brothers, but also to you and your companions. I continue to brew Miravor, but I am concerned about our dwindling stocks. We still have need of those ingredients I spoke of before. I don't suppose there's anywhere else but the Etmores I can look for them? There is nowhere else they may be found without a journey of many months. For these rare ingredients, I am afraid you will need to search the Ettenmoors. But do so only if it does not risk your safety. You are more important to us than even a flask of Miravor. If they are anywhere to be found, then you shall have them. Farewell, Lady Arwen.
How can I assist you? I've found a few things on my travels that you might be interested in. Take a look. Ah, these are work of Westernese, the lost land of Numenor. The men who forged these items were skilled indeed. 
You have the makings of a unique weapon here. Although these components were never part of a single work, I believe you have assembled everything I would need to make it so. The finished weapon would undoubtedly carry some elven qualities. What do you mean by that? Only that with a work such as this, the finished product is liable to reflect the nature of the smith who assembles it. If, for example, a dwarven smith were to complete this weapon, it might possess quite different qualities from the weapon I would create. It seems fitting that a dwarven smith should do this work for me. As you wish. I will help you should you change your mind. Continue the search, but be wary. More than one ranger has been lost in these wild lands.
Greetings, my friends. I could scarce believe what I saw from above. But elf, dwarf, and man battling the enemy together, such things are not often seen. I knew it had to be you. Valoram, it is good to see you. I never thought we would meet again so soon. Nor did I. It does seem a strange coincidence, but a happy one nonetheless. We were told the Edenmores were dangerous. But the place is thick with enemies. Is there something going on we should know about? 
Indeed there is. The orcs and trolls of the Eden Moors are gathering to follow in the wake of Bagrisar, a corrupt stone giant. The foul folk respect his strength, and they will follow him for plunder and the chance to do evil. The giant must be stopped before he can bring this army to bear against our friends and allies. A stone giant? I've heard of them, but I rather hope the stories were just that. Stories. Giants are real enough. From what I have been told, they dwell only in the highest mountain vales and keep mostly to themselves. I've never heard they were hostile to our kind. They seldom are. Eagles and the stone giants have shared the mountain heights without conflict for many generations. But this giant, Bagrasar, is different. Without provocation, he ambushed some of our people, taking them unaware and striking them down with hurled boulders. Many of our Ares he also destroyed, along with the defenseless fledglings who nested there. Gwai here summoned his strength to punish the giant, but he fled before us. We believe he has come here to the Eden Moors, where he is gathering an army of orcs and trolls. Bagrasar is a threat to all. The sooner he is destroyed, the safer we shall be. Any chance there will be more than one giant to deal with? I do not believe so, for we have learned Bagrasar is an outcast among his own kind. They disowned him for past crimes, and will offer him no protection from our vengeance. Gandalf the Grey told us he traveled in the Etmores without any trouble only a few weeks ago. But look at it now. Enemies are thicker than fleas on a warg's hide around here. These moors are always dangerous. A breeding ground for trolls and orcs. But even here, it is unusual to see so many enemies openly assembling. The presence of Bagrasar makes them bold. They believe he will lead them to the bloodshed and plunder they crave. And it may well be, unless the giant is destroyed. You and your kin live in the Ettenmoors. No, we keep our areas atop the high peaks of the nearby Misty Mountains. We have come to the Ettenmoors in pursuit of Bagrasar. An enemy of yours is an enemy of ours. We'll join with you in the hunt for this giant. Your aid would be most welcome. Together we may be able to best him. Every hour he lives, his following grows greater. Let us press on!
here. All that glitters is not gold, but this is. Ah, a vein of gold. It's a hidden opening in the stone.
Gold. No sense leaving it for the orcs to find. What have we here? The glint of gold. Their archers have the high ground.
We need to pass that gate! They have trapped us! I see movement in the trees! We must work together to overcome these odds! Fear not! I will aid you! Move on now. Yeah. 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 
Farin, it is good to see you safely return to Imladris, and with your head still set safely upon your shoulders. No one's happier about that than I am, lady. I've a gift for you. The items from the Etnmores you asked for. Thank you. You have brought these in good time, for we have made barely enough Miravor for present need, and now there is none to spare. With these supplies, I can replace what has been given away. And as I promised, I have kept aside a flask for you. Miravor is potent. Thus, I would advise you to keep this against a time when you are sorely hurt, and your strength of will falters. Drink of it then, and you will be restored. My thanks, Lady Arwen. I won't forget your generosity. If you pardon my saying so, you look troubled. Is something bothering you? How can I help? You have done much already, but I will lay my problem before you. For many years, I have worked secretly upon a banner for Estelle, for Aragorn. It is my hope he will bear it triumphantly into Gondor, and the time is right for him to reclaim his heritage. This must be a banner like no other, and must endure for the ages. To that end, I am using the most precious of metals, Mithril. Our most skilled smith, Angmir, has drawn Mithril into thread for me. The embroidery is nearly done, but as careful as I have been, I fear what I have may not be enough to complete the design. Mithril! That's a kingly gift indeed. But where outside the mines of Moria could more be found? It is true. There is nowhere in Middle-earth where Mithril might still be mined other than Moria. Yet in ages past, Quantities of this precious metal made their way by trade and gift to many other places in the world. Aye, there are items of Mithril to be found in the vaults of the Lonely Mountain. They are among the oldest and most treasured heirlooms of my kin. Still, it seems there is little hope that more Mithril can be found in so short a time. What exists in the world is likely considered too precious to part with. Tell me about this banner. Why is it so important to you? It bears the symbols of Elendil, from whom Aragorn is descended. I have embroidered upon black cloth the high crown of the kings of Numenor, and seven stars in which I have set brilliant jewels. Below them is the White Tree of Gondor, the symbol of Aragorn's claim to the throne of that realm and all the lands of the Dúnedain. With this banner go all my hopes, my hope for Estelle to help overthrow the enemy and become king, and for our long pledge of love to be fulfilled. Either our hope will come, or all hope will be lost. These things I have pondered during the many hours I have labored over this banner. There is hope in every thread, and no few tears as well. Maybe there's something else you can use instead of Mithril. I have used both gold and mithril, but surely you, Farin, of all people, appreciate the value of mithril, or true silver. The dwarves valued it above all other metals. You know of its sheen like silver that never tarnishes, and how it is supple enough to be worked into fine thread, stronger than steel. Nothing but mithril can serve my needs. Hmm, who's to say? What you can't have for gold or barter, you can still sometimes wring from the hands of an enemy. It'd be worth it to feel Mithril in my hands, to see its beauty and strength close up. Oh, uh, and, and for Aragorn's sake, of course. If I do find any lady, it will be yours. That is a noble offer. I would not ask you to go into such danger for this alone, for it may yet prove that I already have all that I require. Still, it would ease my mind, and I would see that you were well rewarded for your courage and generosity. May Elbereth watch over you and keep you safe.
slave stinks of troll. Sense a weakness in this wall. I can open a way through it. These caves are extensive. I see sunlight ahead.
Ambush! You have done our work for us, Belaram. Not I, Lord Gwaihir. Your thanks belong to these three. Andriel, Farin, and Aradan. It is they who rid us of Bagrasar. The same three that saved you at Fornos? Indeed. A remarkable chance that we should meet again. If chance it was, your fate seems strangely intertwined. But be that as it may, we are doubly grateful to you. First for saving the life of Belaram, and now for slaying the giant. Are there more stone giants to deal with? There are other giants, certainly, but none that we would consider an enemy. Bargrizar was ever inclined to mischief, and was shunned by his own folk. Yet I never thought him capable of murder. He must have been persuaded to undertake these actions. We have discovered signs that Agandar has been here in the Ettenmoors, that same servant of the Dark Lord that we encountered at Fornost. Then we need look no further for the source of Bagrazar's corruption. But how is it you chose to search these remote moors for Agandar? Elrond Half-Elfin sent us. He had a feeling the enemy might be gathering here. I will not question the wisdom of Master Elrond. He sees much that is hidden from others. Yet I fear you have come too late to find Agandauer. We have searched the Ettenmoors thoroughly in our hunt for Bargrazar, yet we have seen no sign of this servant of the Dark Lord. If he was here, we can be reasonably certain he is here no longer. My people will work to disperse the enemy forces that remain in the Moors. We will be on guard against the return of Agandauer. Then we should return to Elrond at Rivendell. He will be anxious for news, and we have already been long away. 
I will arrange for a messenger. My lord, I owe my life to these three. And I too believe Agandaur to be a grave threat to the free peoples of the north. Eagles no less so than any other. If you would grant me leave, I wish to accompany them and aid them in their quest. You ask a great deal, Belaram. I may have need for all my followers soon. Yet I perceive a great destiny awaits these three, and it seems you are now part of it. Very well. I will grant you permission to join with them for as long as you see fit. Unless Belaram plans to carry his friends like sheep in his talons, he will need help. If it pleases you, my lord, I will gladly accompany them as well. I too have a stake in this quest. Let me be the third. So be it. Three who cleave the air to match three who walk the earth. May fortune favor you all. Arminel, Baron Thor, you shall be at Belaram's command. Obey his word until such time as you return to us. Now I must depart. Many forces are at work across Middle-earth, and many events take shape. I must consider what part the Eagles will play in them. You've been a great help, as the Eagles so often are. Thanks, and farewell. Turn at last. We grew concerned for you. I fear you have missed your chance to say farewell to the members of the Fellowship, for they have departed. Clearly you found danger in the Etinmoors, yet you have returned safely, and in the company of three of the Great Eagles, no less. There is a story behind this, and I am eager to hear it. We found trolls and orcs preparing for war, just as we had feared and they were led by a renegade stone giant. He made war on the great eagles. But with the help of the eagle Belaram, we were able to slay him. That was well done, but this is troubling. Why would a stone giant act in this manner? They have never been hostile to free folk before. We took these tokens from some of our fallen foes. Some of them bear the Black Raven emblem of Agandar. Then we can be certain he is behind the giant's descent into evil. But there are also other tokens here I recognize. These are the marks of the orcs of Mount Gundabad, far to the north. Mount Gundabad? What do you know of that place? It is a great peak that stands far to the north, at the meeting point of the Misty Mountains and the Grey Mountains. Once, Gundabad was a delving of the dwarves, but it was abandoned long ago. It has since become a stronghold of the orcs, would be hard-pressed to find a more dangerous location in all the North. I don't like the sound of that. Orcs are gathering from all across the North to serve Agandaur. I think Rivendell might well be their target. I fear you are correct. We have made plans for our defense, but truthfully, our best hope lies in eliminating the threat of Agandaur. If the Orcs of Mount Gundabad are serving Agandaur, Perhaps we can find him there. It may well be. From Mount Gundabad, the orcs have many tunnels and secret pathways connecting the hidden mines and orc holds of the Misty Mountains. The orcs can move along those routes in great numbers without being seen. If Agandaur is raising an army to fight for his master in the north, it is certain he will have traveled to Gundabad. The evidence you have uncovered confirms this to be so. Yet we have no way of knowing if he is there still. Perhaps not. But we must know one way or another. We cannot sit idle waiting for him to begin the war on his terms. To walk into such an orc-infested pit as Mount Gundabad would seem like folly. But you have proven your skill and daring many times over. And, too, you have the eagles to aid you. It may be that you will find a way to take the enemy by surprise. It is certain that, were you to destroy Agandaur, you would cut the heart from Sauron's plan to make war in the north. But what about Frodo? 
Maybe we'd be better off doing something to help him on his quest. That die is cast. We must abide the consequences, for good or ill. There is nothing more we here can do but to look to our own defense. What will you do? We will continue to plan for the defense of Imladris. The enemy will not find us unprepared. I will send warnings to such allies as we have. There is strength to be found in Imladris still, but in truth, you three may be our best hope. Oh, well, then since you put it that way, I guess we best be about it. We're off to Mount Gundabad. Your courage is commendable, but be certain you are well prepared. Mount Gundabad will not be forgiving of the unwary. Farewell, and may the stars shine upon your path. It is good to see you once again. We were beginning to be concerned for you and your companions. And yet you return victorious, upon the backs of eagles, no less. We are grateful to you for ending the threat of Bargrasar. The giant might have done great harm but for you. The trolls and orcs of the Etanmoors will be dismayed by his fall. They will be slow to march against us now. What do you know about stone giants? They are mysterious creatures. Little is known of them, and little do they concern themselves with the affairs of other folk. Yet they were never thought to be wicked, nor are they counted among the servants of the enemy. Making it all the more strange that Bagrasar sought to make war upon us. I detect the hand of the Dark Lord in this. What about Rivendell? Have you spotted any sign of enemies skulking around here? No true threat, but our Wardens have slain a few goblins that strayed near. It may well be they were scouts seeking the location of Imladris. Wolves are also roaming in great numbers in the wild. These might be no more than simple beasts, but the enemy has used such spies before. We must assume the location of Imladris is a secret no longer. Is Rivendell prepared for an attack? As well as may be. This is not a fortress. Secrecy has always been our best defense. Still, an enemy would find the terrain difficult to deal with. And we have a few useful tricks to play, as the Nazgul learned when they attempted to cross the river. Yes, we might resist for a long while, but if the enemy comes in great numbers, it will only be a matter of time before Imladris falls. All the more reason to be rid of Agendaur. The sooner the better. I am glad you are so eager to come to grips with the enemy. Yet do not abandon caution completely. We will find few places in the north more perilous than Mount Gundabad. I only wish we were free to accompany you. What do you know of Mount Gundabad? It was once a great work of the dwarves, but it was abandoned long ago, and the orcs have taken it for their own. It is certain to be teeming with enemies. You will need to keep all your wits about you if you travel to Gundabad. You sound surprised that the Eagles would join with us. But they have come to the aid of the Free Folk before. With my own eyes, I saw them fight beside us in the Battle of Five Armies. We have always counted the Great Eagles as allies and friends. But many men mistrust them and they have grown wary of dealing with other folk. They have been known to take counsel with certain of the wise upon occasion, yet they are their own masters, and aid only those they deem worthy. Clearly you have made a strong impression upon them. They'll be a great help in the hunt for Agendaur. I am glad you are so eager to come to grips with the enemy. Yet do not abandon caution completely. You will find few places in the north more perilous than Mount Gundabad. I only wish we were free to accompany you. You also were sent out as scouts. What did you find? 
Our road led us across the misty mountains and into Ravanion. We found wargs gathering in the wild, but as of yet there were no signs they had crossed the mountains. There were fewer orcs than we would have expected in the mountains. Strange, we deemed it. We suspect they may be massing somewhere else. But where and for what purpose, we cannot say. I have a feeling they're gathering to do Agendaur's bidding. The sooner we deal with that one, the better. I am glad you are so eager to come to grips with the enemy. Yet do not abandon caution completely. You will find few places in the north more perilous than Mount Gundabad. I only wish we were free to accompany you. You did pretty well at Fornost. I wouldn't mind having the two of you join us in the hunt. Alas, our father has made it clear we are to remain close at hand as long as Imladris is threatened. Such is our duty, and we will abide by it. Otherwise, we would have sought leave to accompany Aragorn on his quest. Why would an elf of Rivendell wish to leave his home to fight in southern lands? For many reasons, not least of which is the friendship we bear for Aragorn. We have shared many hardships and perils together, as we did with his forefathers before him. We would stand with him when he achieves the quest for which so many generations of the Dúnedain have striven. And so too would we be there with him at the bitter end, should all our hopes fail. If that is how you feel, why not ride south at once? We cannot think only of ourselves. We have a duty to our father and our kin. And what use would it be for Aragorn to gain the realm of Gondor, only to find the lands of Arnor reduced to ruin and ash behind him? Huh? What's this about Arnor? It is the lost northern kingdom of the Dúnedain. Aragorn is heir to the throne of Arnor, as well as the southern kingdom of Gondor. And should he fulfill his destiny, Arnor will be restored. Yet the armies and agents of the Dark Lord would see it otherwise. They will not rest until these lands lie under Sauron's heel, and all free folk are slain or enslaved. Never. The North will not fall into shadow while I still draw breath. It heartens me to hear you say so. If you and your companions continue as you have begun, we truly have little to fear. <laughs> Indeed. With you harrying the enemy across the whole of the North, the two of us will soon be on the road south. <laughs> I'll see what I can do, then. Farewell for now. Oh, hello again. Don't mind me. Speaking with you got me dreaming of the old days. Dwarves, elves, and men fighting against orcs and goblins. Those were glorious times. I'd best be off. Goodbye for now, kinsman. Welcome back, Farin. I saw you arrive, and I must say, it made for a fine sight. We have something in common now, my friend. We are among the few who can claim to have ridden on the back of an eagle. Although I'm sure you enjoyed your journey more than I, truthfully, I found the whole experience rather terrifying. <laughs> your friends among my kinfolk have often told stories of your adventures with the eagles, but I'd like to hear it from you. Oh, well, it's a long story, really. There we were, thirteen dwarves, one wizard, and one rather frightened hobbit, perched in the treetops, trying to hide from an army of wolves and goblins. They sniffed us out soon enough, and set fire to the trees. It would have been the end of us all right there, had the King of the Eagles not led his people to our rescue. I was grateful to be saved, of course, but to this day I still feel a bit dizzy whenever I think about that wild flight. Ah, the poor bird is probably still bruised from the death grip I had on him during my first flight. It does get a little easier after a while, though. Come now, I can't believe that even flying would give a moment's pause to one brave enough to fight with giants. Oh, yes, I've heard all about your adventures in the Ettenmoors. Everyone in Rivendell is talking about it. 
I've seen stone giants with my own eyes. It's beyond me how you managed to get the better of one. So, you fought with giants too? Fought? Oh, heavens no! It was more like trying my best not to be accidentally trod upon. Frankly, I'm surprised a giant would make war upon us in this way. The ones I encountered seemed caught up in their own affairs and not the least bit concerned with me or my companions. Agendaur had a hand in turning the giant bad. I've no doubt of that. Agendaur again. Oh, I don't like hearing about that one. Especially when I think about places like Bree or the Shire. It seems like there is so little to stand in his way. We stand in his way. We'll find him if we have to search every cave, pit, and ruin in the north. And when we do, he'll get the same thing we gave the giant. You mark my words. I believe you will find a way to do that, my friend. You have certainly made a good start by thwarting his plans at Fornost and the Etten Moors. You know, someone should be setting down this story of yours. It's certainly worthy of being remembered. Hmm, I, I do have my own book to finish, but uh, perhaps when that's done... Maybe you should give me an account of your adventures. I'll take notes, and one day I can write your story. What do you say to that? Bilbo Baggins writing my story? That would be an honor. Very well, then. Why don't you start at the beginning? I suppose it all started that day at the Sarn Ford. There we were. And so, with the giant dead and the great eagles joining our cause, we returned here to Rivendell to inform Elrond of all we'd learned. Outstanding! What a riveting tale! There is enough there to fill a volume or two already. I just hope I manage to get it all straight. I tried to take good notes. Uh, you really must come back later to let me know how it's progressing. If I get the chance, I'll be sure to do that. Now I'd best be on my way. Farewell, Bilbo. I am grateful to you, Valiant Dwarf. Even our High Ares were threatened by the giant Bargrassar. You have my thanks. You eagles will be a great help to us, that's certain. But I'm curious why you volunteered to join with us. It was enough for me that Belaram wished to join you. But there is also this. One of the eagles the stone giant slew was my own father. You avenged him. And for that act alone, I would bear any of you to the farthest ends of Middle-earth. And though Bargrassar is gone, I still burn with the need for vengeance against the master that sent him against us, Agandar. Your enemy is my enemy. I will not rest until he is brought down. Were you one of the eagles that came to our aid at the Battle of Five Armies? I was there. I saw the goblins that had stealthily climbed the slopes of the mountain to attack your people from above, and was among those who set upon them and cast them from the cliffs to perish. By my beard, you might be the very eagle that saved me that day. Those blasted goblins were throwing boulders down on us. If so, I am glad. Let all the foul servants of the enemy meet the same fate, and I will be content. I wouldn't mind knowing a little bit more about your leader, Gwaihir. Gwaihir is the Lord of the Eagles. He can outfly the North Wind, and his word is law. Long ages of the world have passed since ancient Thorondor, first and greatest of Eagle Lords, soared over Middle-earth. But Gwaihir is the mightiest descendant of that line. He is wise and sees much that others miss. We're bound for Mount Gundabad. A long way from the sound of it. Are you ready for such a trip? 
We are strong and rested. Bellaram awaits you whenever you wish to depart. He is our leader in this venture. It is a fine day for flying, don't you think? Great eagles are no beasts of burden, Baron Thor. Are you sure you're willing to keep carrying us? I am more than willing. I had long begged the Windlord for a chance to prove myself. I don't fear orc, goblin, or troll. Let's return to the air and put fear into the hearts of our enemies. It is a grand adventure! Is Belaram your kin? No, but he has always guided me. Belaram taught me tricks of the air and secrets of the wind. We often hunt together. He's shown me the fine art of snatching a wild sheep from the side of a mountain, and how to dive upon a wolf and pluck hairs from its tail. Wherever Belaram leads, I will follow. Would you be one of the eagles that carried Bilbo and the dwarves to safety during their quest? I haven't met Bilbo, though I've heard much about him. My father was one of those who carried a dwarf, and later fought in the Battle of Five Armies. I was considered too young and inexperienced to take part in the battle. I have much to do if I'm to match my father's fame and valor. What can you tell me about Mount Gundabad? I've never been there, but I know it's a high peak that lies far to the north, on the edge of the frozen wastes, and that it has long been infested with orcs. We do not nest there. When the north wind blows across the wastes, it racks the mountain with blizzards driven by fierce gales. But I will not be daunted by the north wind. Gundabad awaits us. It's a terrible, dangerous thing we're asking of you. Maybe we're asking too much. I believe this is the time when all who care for the fate of Middle-earth must act. From on high, I see many lands and many people beneath my wings. In my own way, I am a steward of the North. In this hour, I will join with those who are bold enough and strong enough to stand against the likes of Agandar. For if we fail, there may be nothing left to watch over. It's a great honor you do us, Belaram. I'll treasure your friendship, more than gold or jewels. It is I who am honored. I am pleased to find such friends in these dark times. You may depend on me to the end, whatever that may be. Call upon me without hesitation. We stand ready to bear you to Gundabad. It's a fine thing your friends have done, offering to help us at all. But do you think they really know what they've gotten themselves into? What can you tell me about them? Armanel is a seasoned warrior. He knows full well what he faces, and accepts it gladly. Baron Thor is young and eager to prove himself, but he has deep courage, and few can match his swiftness on the wing. But you need not take my word. Ask them yourself. They will gladly speak with you if you so desire. It was good of Gwai here to give you leave to help us. It's unusual for the Lord of Eagles to concern himself with us ground dwellers. It is true. Gwaihir thinks first of the safety of his own kind, and he is more likely to take a dangerous task upon himself than to send another. He sees us as observers, watching from high above, but holding aloof from the affairs of the Earth. He feels we should bear information, not burdens. Even now, the Wind Lord is considering what part the Great Eagle should play in the events that lie before us, though there may be little time left to ponder such things. I take it you don't entirely agree with his view of things. I have served Gwaihir loyally for a long time, and he, in turn, has the wisdom to trust my judgment. He knows that I have chosen the wind I must fly upon, and my choice is this. I can no longer stand apart. I must act. Even an eagle must rest upon an area that has its roots in the earth. We cannot entirely escape the ground, and the fate of elves, men, dwarves, and even hobbits will ultimately be our fate. What'll be waiting for us at Mount Gundabad? I can tell you little. The stronghold of Gundabad is carved into a great mountain peak covered in snow and ice. 
We rarely fly that far north because of the treacherous winds and blizzards that howl from the frozen wastes beyond. It is an ancient abode of enemies, and we must approach it with the greatest caution. Maybe we've bitten off more than we can chew. What chance do you think we have? Three alone cannot hope to stand against all the orcs of Gundabad. Only stealth will serve you. We must search out a secret way that will not pit you directly against your foes, or you will stir up a hornet's nest such as you cannot imagine. I have seen you three triumph against desperate odds. If you cannot find a way, then no one can. My companions and I will be there to help as best we may, but once you enter the confines of Gundabad, there will be little that we can do. We'll keep that in mind. Farewell for now.
Sense a weakness in this wall. I can open a way through it. Well met again, foreign lad. What can I do for you? I've collected these gems for the elf smith, Angmir. They look good to me, but your knowledge of precious stones is far greater than mine. Will you take a look at them? My pleasure. I always enjoy handling fine gems. Mm. Oh, yes. These are excellent stones. See here, the depth of color. The way they seem to shine with an inner light. In fact, I've a fancy to buy them from you. I never tire of collecting such stones, and I've plenty of coin in my purse. How is the weight of your own purse these days? Your pardon, kinsman, but I don't want to disappoint the Elfsmith. A promise is a promise. Ah, well. Fair enough. But the offer stands if you change your mind. Welcome, 
I'm curious about those gemstones we spoke of. Is Glow and confirm their quality? He has. Here they are. Ah, excellent. I will put these to good use. And since you have provided me with the materials I need to fashion more elf stones, I would be pleased if you would accept some of my already finished work. Take whichever suits you best. Well, well. Here's the champion of Erebor, come to visit old friends. I'm truly glad to see you again, Farin. Even stuck here as we are, we've heard reports of your deeds. You three are earning quite a name for yourselves. I'd find some of those stories hard to believe, see if I've seen your prowess firsthand. I'll never forget what you did for me in the Barrow Downs. If I were free to choose my own road, I'd be begging leave to join you on your quest. Ah. Uh... Best be careful what you're wishing for. We've had more than our share of hard knocks, I can tell you. I'm certain of that, if even half of what I've heard is true. But my duty keeps me here anyway, and a ranger always does his duty. Ever find yourself begrudging that duty? What? Watching out for folk who fear me, or at best think of me as a rascal and a vagabond? <laughs> Strangely, I do not. Knowing I help make it possible for folk to live their lives without fear, well, that helps me sleep easy at night. At least on the nights that I am allowed to sleep. <laughs> then I'll leave you to your duty. Farewell, Ranger. Lewin has told me of your heroics in the Boroughs. I am grateful to you for saving one of my Rangers. It is only a pity that it was too late for poor Kalaran. Another crime the enemy will pay for. Kalaran dedicated his life to defending others, just as you have. You can best honor his memory by continuing to protect the North from the threat of Agandaur. You can count on that. Goodbye, Halbarad. Are you in need of supplies? Keep well, Maradon.
Welcome. It is good to see you again. Thanks to you and Solana, I've made a complete recovery. You must forgive the harsh words I spoke to you before. It is hard for a healer to be so helpless. You have done a great thing in saving the lad's life. That is one, at least, that the darkness will not claim. Thank you. It took both of us to save his life. Thank you, and farewell. Messenger, I have wonderful news. Rowley and I are to be wed in spring. Didn't I tell you my father would come round in the end? Well done, lass. Good luck to you both. I'm not doing anything wrong. Honest, I'm not. Back again? What can I do for you? I found these pieces. Mighty fine craftsmanship, to be sure. I think I have all the makings of a fine weapon. I just need someone to put it all together. Let me see him. Oh, this is nice work. Very nice. And it does seem like you have everything you need, but, uh... But... I'm just not the man for this sort of thing. Maybe an elf or dwarf smith would serve you better. Farewell, smith. Yeah. Welcome. What can I do for you? I'd best be on my way. To see you again, my friend. You'd be happy to know Idona's father has given us permission to marry. We are to be wed this spring. You must be doing something right if you changed her father's mind. Well, I have been working hard, but I think it had more to do with Idona. He always gives in when his daughter sets her mind on something. Good things and good times come to you both. Farewell, Rowley. You're welcome here, but don't do anything to excite the local folk. Everyone's a little on edge these days. I'd best be on my way. Thanks to you, I can arm the town should the need arise.
action soon, or this weather may prove more deadly than the orcs. Take heart. We are nearly there, and this snowfall will hide us from the eyes of the enemy below. Belram, look! Above the mountain! Set us down! We can attempt to find a way into the mountain under cover of this storm! There is little chance of that, with those creatures keeping watch from above. Once we land you, my comrades and I will draw off the beasts. Let's hope those flying beasts are too occupied with the eagles to notice us. We can hope their eyes are less keen than those of our eagle friends. We may appear to be just a few more orcs among the hordes of Gundabad. It's a sad day, and I have to hope I'm mistaken for an orc. searching for something. Well, it can't be us. We've only just arrived, and they're heading the other way. But what then are they looking for?
There's a poor excuse for a hidden door here. Well met again, Baron. Have you news for me? Be of good cheer, lady, for I've some wondrous news. It is enough simply to have your company. Come, what is this good news? 
I've come bearing treasure. Here's the mithril you asked for. And by Durin's beard, it's as beautiful as they say. It is a joyous sight. It shines as though Elbereth herself had blessed this metal with the light of her stars. I cannot thank you enough for all that you have endured to bring this to me. The greatest of all gifts. But I will need only a fraction of this for the banner. The rest should be yours. Take it to the smith, Engmir. He has great skill in the working of true silver, so that it imparts special gifts of power and strength. I am certain he will be able to create something that will be of great benefit to you. And thank you again. Estelle's banner will be all I hoped because of you.
Hello again. What can I help you with? I've acquired a quantity of mithril for Lady Arwen's use. She suggested the excess might be used to improve my gear. Ah, oh, marvelous. I'm no stranger to working this most precious of metals. But even here in Imlantris, I seldom have the opportunity. And there is certainly more than enough now for Arwen's need. With the remainder, I can inlay runes that will add great strength to your armor. Or should you prefer, I can enhance the power of a weapon to the bane of your enemies. You have but to choose.
Skulls are a danger to all. It appears they've been feeding upon the orcs. We are getting near to the mountain itself. If there's an entrance here, it'll be nearby. Another orc warband. What are they doing? Studying the ground? There must be something wrong. Look, there's a door. Someone was here before us. There was a fight here very recently. The bodies. They're dwarves. This one lives still. Well then, come on, you scum. Finish it. You... You're not orcs. Andriel, help him. Use your arts. No, no. Save it. The arrow's poison. No hope. But you... You can help. Help my friends. Where are your friends? Went on. Can't... Can't say where. Now. Find them. They need help. Why are you here? What were you attempting? We... Seek a weapon. We must find it. Use it. Stop the orcs. A weapon? What kind of weapon? Where can we find it? Dwarf weapon. In the stone. Nordry has the key. Find them. Help them. Please. Save Nordenbart. Nordenbart? Where's that? He will speak no more. He is dead. But there may be more like him within this fortress. Aye, and they're looking for some sort of weapon. Come on, let's see if we can find them.
It pains me to leave fallen dwarves to these accursed orcs, but we have no choice.
What of this? These chains and gears. This is the heart of the Endless Village. They fought weapons and armor to equip the hordes gathering here. They're making more than that. Can't you smell it? The same blasting powder used against us at Fornost. There must be a huge store of it here. Then let us destroy the gears. Perhaps we will slow their war mills.
possible.
This is it. Quick life. Up you go. Maybe not, but we can try. Well then, come on, you filth! Baruch Kazor! Kazama Mago! We're friends! We're here to help you! We must work together to overcome these odds. There's a mounted crossbow over there. Find the mounted crossbows! We'll hold them off! Kazan! Kazan! Keep them away from the weapon! And all! say exactly the same. What are you doing here? We've come to activate an ancient weapon. With luck, it'll kill a lot of orcs. What sort of weapon? You'll see. Once activated, it'll take some time to do its work. Aye, and it's sure to bring a lot more orcs down on us, too. No time for dilly-dallying. Go ahead and use it. We'll hold off the orcs. I'll save you! Fear not! I will aid you! I'll save you! 
Aye, a good deal of it anyway, just as we hoped. You knew this was going to happen? It's what we came here for. We had to strike this blow if our people are to survive. I am... I'm heartily sorry for getting all of you killed as well. I don't think we need to worry about death just yet. Look! Durin's beard! Well, this is a day I'll not soon forget. I've seen a few things in my time, but I've not flown on an eagle's back till today. Well, now that it's a bit easier to talk, let me thank you properly for saving our lives and bid you welcome to Nordenbad, our home. Nordri's father, the Lord Gorin, will want to speak with you. Nordri's gone ahead to report on the Gundabad raid and to tell him about everything you did for us. We traveled east a long way over many mountain peaks to get here. But where in Middle-earth are we exactly? Aye, it's east you've come. Clean over the Misty Mountains and along the length of the Grey Mountains. You've left the lands of Eriador behind. You're on the northern edge of the land of Rovanian now. I'm pleased to make the acquaintance of a fellow dwarf. But between the fighting and traveling and all, I don't think we got your name. Oh, confound me for an old fool! Bruni, son of Bane, at your service and your families. I'm captain of the Nordenbad Guard and a servant of Lord Gorin. Why did you lead your warriors against Mount Gundabad? We keep a careful watch on the orcs in the mountains. When we saw them gathering in large numbers at Gundabad, we had reason to believe they were preparing to move against us here. We didn't like our chances against that many orcs. But we knew about the hidden weapon at Gundabad, so Nordri and I led a small force there to use it against them. Seems like a suicide mission to me. Aye, every dwarf was a volunteer and knew he wouldn't be coming back. But you said Nordri is Gorin's son? He let his son go on a mission like that? He didn't have a choice. After a lifetime of lecturing the lad about his duty to his people, there was no way Gorin could say no when Nordri volunteered, much as he'd have liked to. I'd like to know a bit more about the weapon you used to collapse the ceiling of Gundabad. It was an ancient defense made by the dwarves who dealt Gundabad long ago. Nobody understood the qualities of stone better than the dwarves of old, and they knew that just the right sound can cause solid stone to split. They use that knowledge to build a defense against any enemy who might force their way past the gates of their home. But Mount Gundabad has been in the hands of the Orcs for centuries. How did you know about this weapon? Aye, it's been in the hands of the Orcs for many a year, but not straight through. I was only a lad when my people fought a great war against the Orcs, but my father helped sack Gundabad. He was one of the stone workers who found the weapon. It made a big impression on him, and he told me the tale so many times I was sure I could find the thing and use it against the orcs. But how could you be certain it would still function after all those centuries? <laughs> we didn't. The whole thing was a gamble. Luckily it paid off. So, um, do you have something like that here? Some things are best left secret. Do you think the orcs will follow us here to Nordenbad? Escaping on eagles like we did will throw them off the trail a bit, but it won't be long before they realize it was a group of dwarves that hit them first, and that'll get them thinking about us here. It's not like they're not thinking about Nordenbad anyway, but I'll let Gorin tell you more about that. I'd like to hear a bit more about your Lord Gorin before we meet him. Gorin's a great leader. He'd have to be to hold Nordenbad together for so long, surrounded by enemies and starved for basic necessities as we are. There's not a dwarf here who wouldn't lay down his life for him. We'll be happy to speak with your Lord Gorin. Just make your way past the doors you see yonder and you'll find him within. The guards have been instructed to let you pass. I suspect I'm the first man to see the inside of these halls. I am certain I am the first elf. Chilly for 
mind. You should not keep the lord of these halls waiting. Here, sire, those I spoke of. Allow me to present a kinsman, Farron of Erebor, and also Andriel and Eridan, his companions. We succeeded in our task, and I live to tell of it, thanks only to their aid. You are most welcome here, kinsmen, and no less so your companions, be they man, elf, or eagle. Welcome all to Nordenbad, last hall of the Longbeards in the Grey Mountains. You have returned to me, my son and my oldest friend, whom already I mourned as lost. For this, you will forever have my gratitude and the hospitality of these halls. Know that this is not something likely given. For never before have we allowed any but our own folk to pass these gates. And no eyes have gazed upon the hidden lake of Azanzaram, save those of our close kindred. Yet for what you have done, I will gladly lay aside our ancient oath of secrecy. You are fellow Longbeards. Then we truly are kin. I didn't know any of our folk still dwelt in the Grey Mountains. Aye. In centuries past, most of our kin called these mountains home. But then the dragons came from the far north. One by one, our halls were lost or abandoned. All but Nordenbad. We alone endured those dark times. And thanks to you, we may hope to endure our current troubles as well. Tell me about this Nordenbad of yours. My great-great-grandsire was the first to enter the caves of this mountain where he discovered the hidden lake we call Azanzaram. He was awed by its beauty and led some of his kin here. Slowly, over many long years, with loving hands and careful chisels, we created the halls you see before you. Nordenbad was never rich in gold or jewels, but its beauty would move even the most cold-hearted dwarf. That is why we have remained here for so long. There is not a dwarf among us who would not choose death for exile from our home. I have beheld many an underground lake, but never one as large and beautiful as this. Is this the work of your kin? Nay, my ancestors discovered Azanzaram even as you see it. We have worked with care to enhance what we found. A chip here, a tap there, fashioning bridges, halls, and tunnels. But always, we have taken care to preserve the great gift we were given. It is indeed a marvel. I would these were peaceful times, so I might bide here for a while to see all your works and wonders. May I ask how it was you happened to be in so unlikely a place as Mount Gundabad? One does not go lightly into so foul a pit. We were seeking a servant of Mordor, a man called Agendaur. Agendaur? We are familiar with that one. Curse his black heart. He appeared before our gates some weeks past, and called us to parley, in the name of Sauron the Great, so he said. A pity you didn't cut him down before he uttered a word. That one deserves no less. I dare say he does. Yet I would not tarnish the honor of Nordenbad by attacking an emissary seeking to parley. Even one foul enough to serve the Lord of Mordor. Aye, I suppose you're right. But what did the snake have to say? He demanded that we yield ourselves up to the mercy of Sauron. As if there was any mercy in the Dark Lord. He lays claim to Nordenbad, telling us if we turn over our halls and riches without a fight, our lives will be spared, and we will be free to seek a new home elsewhere. Of course, we would have nothing of that. When we defied him, he grew wrathful threatening us with the fiery doom that overtook our ancestors. Fiery doom? You don't think... I fear he may have allied himself with the dragon Orgast who dwells in these parts. With such a beast at his command, we would have little hope of resisting him. A dragon? So Smaug was not the last of that evil breed. Alas, no. 
there are dragons still to be found in these mountains, and yet more dwell on the wastes beyond. They may not be as great or wicked as was Smaug, but they are large and evil enough. Make no mistake about that. But could even Agendauer persuade a dragon to do his will? Perhaps not on his own account. But if he speaks for the Dark Lord, even Urgast would think twice before offending him. Nah. Dragons are wicked creatures, and their greed knows no bounds. Agendauer only has to name the right price. Perhaps the best course would be to destroy this dragon before Agendauer sends him against us. Well, destroy Urgast? If only it were that simple. The attack on Gundabad would be a peaceful stroll around the lake in comparison. Eh, if it were so easy to slay dragons, there would be many more dwarves still dwelling in these mountains. Urgost has never taken notice of us before. We rather hoped it would stay that way. I have heard it said it does not pay to leave a live dragon out of your calculations if you live near one. And we cannot allow Agendauer to gain such a powerful ally. Aye, better go after it before it comes after us. Where can we find Urgost? They do not lack for courage, I will grant you. Yet we know not where the dragon dwells. No dwarf has discovered his lair and lived to tell of it. Perhaps Radagast knows this secret, or can discover it. Seems there is little that happens in Wilderland that escapes his notice. And who is Radagast? Radagast the Brow. He is a wizard, a master of birds and beasts. He keeps to himself mostly, but he's a decent enough sort. As long as you mean no harm to the wild creatures he befriends. He dwells within the forest of Mirkwood, away to the south. Perhaps your companion Belaram would know where to find him, for it is said that Radagast is a friend to the Lord of Eagles himself. Then we should travel to Mirkwood. I am certain we will learn something of value speaking with Radagast. Indeed. But before you set out, please accept a token of our gratitude. Seek out my steward Galar. I have instructed him to open our vaults to you. I believe you may find something within that will be of service in the days ahead. Ah, there's a view that would move the heart of any dwarf. It's marvelous! I still can't believe I'm alive. I thought I would draw my last breath in the fetid air of Mount Gundabad. Mind you, I'm not complaining. I gather you've been in Mirkwood before? I've been around it a lot more than in it, and that suits me just fine. I don't care for that wood. Don't know how anyone could. But I've often traveled to the eaves of the forest to trade with the Bjornings who live thereabout. It was on such a trading venture that I happened to meet Radagast. I met a few of these Bjornings on my journey west. What do you know of them? A hardy folk, and brave, as any who dwell between Mirkwood and the Misty Mountains would need to be. Under their chieftain, Grimbjorn, they've kept the mountain passes and river crossings open, even in these troubled times. But I've heard rumors of war on their borders of late. The high passes may now be closed, at least to those without the benefit of eagle wings. Can you tell me more about Radagast? He's an unusual sort. Friend to all beasts and birds. To be honest, I don't think he cares much for dwarves. But maybe he just prefers the company of animals. One thing's certain, there are few people with more knowledge of this part of the world. He even spoke of Nordenbad as if it were common knowledge. What do you think of our chances against Urgost? <sighs> it's not that I doubt your courage and skill, and I'd be mighty glad to no longer have a dragon as a neighbor. But truthfully, I wonder if anyone can overcome such a beast. I just hope your luck proves equal to your daring. What will you and your kin do now, Nordry? I'm afraid we're all out of tricks to play. All we can do is prepare our defenses, 
hunker down and wait for whatever the winds of war might blow our way. Good luck with whatever befalls. Farewell, kinsmen. There's some fine stonework here. Very fine indeed. There are skilled artisans here to be sure. Ah, you must be foreign. Our distant kin from the Lonely Mountain. Word of you has spread like a beard on fire. Well, well, this is a rare treat. I hope all your folk are such fierce warriors. The enemy will feel your blows for a long time to come. So, how can I help you today? Ha! I'd know that smell anywhere. You've singed your beard. What? Well, well, hard to be a smith without getting a few sparks in your beard. What do you expect when you're working with a hammer and forge and hot metal? <laughs> They've taken to calling me Burry Bird Beard. Used to have a beard down to my belt. Well, shorter is safer. As long as you keep a bucket of water handy, there's nothing to worry about. Keeping a place like this secret for so long? Well, I can't help but wonder if you've found something too valuable to speak of. Mithril, let's say? Oi! Oh, we've no such wealth as Mithril here. Not that I haven't dreamt of finding a vein of true silver. I work iron and a bit of ordinary silver or gold. A few gems here and there. Mostly we hide to escape the notice of the dragons. Bad blood between dwarves and dragons, as well you know. And then there's all the orcs. Ah, but I dream of a day when we could trade for finer goods. I've been working on a silver belt studded with crystal, with a special mount for the gem I crave above all others. The gem that comes from no mine. What dwarf doesn't have a love for that treasure? It's pearls you speak of. Pearls! The most perfect and beautiful of precious things. How they glimmer and gleam. I've hoarded a small handful of white pearls, but even those won't satisfy me for this belt. My dream of perfection is nothing less than the fabled Black Pearl. I've heard rumor of them, but I fear I'll never see one. Leave it to me, kinsman. If there's a black pearl to be found in these parts, I'll bring it to you. Mighty good of you. You'll find me generous should you return. I mean, when you return. Anything else I can do for you? I wonder how your skills stand up against the smiths of Erebor. I'm no braggart, but I'll put my skills up against any smith, dwarf, elf, or man. You may think I don't know much, being set apart from others of my craft. But I'll tell you a little secret. My grandsires go back all the way to the smiths that worked alongside the great elven smith, Celebrimbor himself. In the days of ancient Erigion, there was a great friendship between elves and dwarves. We've passed down skills from forgotten times. I know runes of power and other secrets that give my weapons and armor a hidden strength you'll not find elsewhere. You won't complain about my work. Who was this Celebrimbor? None was a greater craftsman of jewels and forger of metals than Celebrimbor, who was Lord of Erigion. Close friend he was to Narvi, the great stone master, and to my grandsires. He even made seven rings of power for the dwarves. It was Celebrimbo who knew that Sauron had betrayed the elves by making one ring. He heard the enemy declare himself master over all. He was killed in the first war against Sauron, and many of his secrets were lost. Narvi and his kin were lost as well. Only one of my ancestors escaped to carry the tale. So it's been told from grandsire to grandsire to me. What do you know about this Erigian? The lore passed down from my grandsires is little enough. That Erigian lay west of the Misty Mountains near Moria. 
that the elves of Rekian were of a kind known as Noldor, and were clever craftsmen. The Noldor didn't know in the beginning that Sauron was evil. Sauron came to Rekian and taught them how to forge rings of power. But after Sauron was revealed, he invaded Rekian and destroyed it. Nearly 5,000 years ago, that was. Doubt there's much left of the place now. But Sauron's fixing to do the same thing all over again. Even here in the far north. Here, Burry. You might find these old relics interesting. What do you make of them? Well, now, I'm no law master, but these look to be the work of men. Ancient, beyond a doubt. Superb work. Some of the finest I've seen. Perhaps even the work of Western S from Numenor that now lies beneath the sea. I could put these together into a single weapon for you. And a superior weapon it would be. Mind you, I'd be applying my own craft to it, so it'll also have the qualities of a dwarf weapon. And that would differ from an elven smith? That's the way of it. An elven smith would bring certain qualities to the work if he were to put this together. But I think you'll be satisfied with what I can add as well. I could ask for no more than the craftsmanship of a newfound kinsman. Go ahead, if you please. It'll be a pleasure to work on something new. Or ancient, in this case. Rest your heels while I get to work on this. There you go. That's a weapon that begs for an enemy to feel its wrath. May it serve you well against that foul orc-loving Agendauer. Magnificent work, Burry. Not even the Mastersmiths of Erebor could have done better. You have my thanks. So you're the stranger from Erebor. You look like a proper dwarf in spite of that, I guess. Now that you know we're here, I suppose we'll be overrun with distant Ken coming to gawk at our lake. Are you here to buy something? I've an excellent stock of the best Norden bad craft work, so speak up. Time's a wasting. Your welcome leaves something to be desired, kinsman. Why the sour mood? Well, let's see. We've got an orc army growing, a dragon hungry for dwarf snacks, and one of Sauron's lieutenants making threats. Pardon me while I break out in a song and dance. Now see here, I need to do some business. So how's about you buy something before I get downright grumpy? It must be hard to find trade goods when you're hidden away in this place. We've had a rough time of it here, I won't deny it. Mostly we manage some trade with the Bjornings, the men who live down south of us in the vales of the Anduin. They have good use for our metalwork and they bring us foodstuffs in return. Otherwise, there'd be mushrooms for breakfast, mushrooms for lunch, and mushrooms for dinner. You wouldn't believe how many ways we've learned to cook mushrooms. That's enough jabbering. If you're not going to buy something, let me get back to my work. See here, Goran himself sent me. He said to talk to a steward and choose something as a token of his gratitude. Yes, yes. He may have mentioned it to me. It was rather too generous of him. Not that I don't appreciate what you did. But how does he expect me to increase our wealth by giving our best work away? Well, here you go. Take your pick.
Nobody shapes stone like a dwarf. Fellow Radagast can tell us where to find Urkost. We'll have to face him next. Have you ever gone up against a dragon? No. That is a risk I have gladly avoided. One does not willingly seek out a dragon, unless there is no choice. You're afraid of dragons? Only a fool would not fear a dragon. If Urgost has survived this long, he must be full of the guile and cunning of his kind, abominations that they are. This will make him even more dangerous. But that changes nothing. If we must prevent his alliance with Agandar, then fear must be set aside and the dragon found. We should follow Gorin's advice and seek Urgost's whereabouts from Radagast. It's a fine thing your friends have done, offering to help us all. But do you think they really know what they've gotten themselves into? What can you tell me about them? Armanel is a seasoned warrior. He knows full well what he faces, and accepts it gladly. Baron Thor is young, and eager to prove himself. But he has deep courage, and few can match his swiftness on the wing. But you need not take my word. Ask them yourself. They will gladly speak with you, if you so desire. I worry about what's happening in Erebor. Perhaps I should be at home, defending my people, rather than chasing after dragons. Once before, the Lonely Mountain fell before the might of a dragon. Consider what could happen should Agandar win the allegiance of Urgost. Would you have Erebor become a dragon's den a second time? We are the only hope for the North, and we must do whatever is required of us to bring down Agandar. Only then will your home and our Ares be safe. You're close friends with this wizard Radagast, I take it. 
The brown wizard has been a close friend of the eagles since he first came to Middle-earth and settled into the forest that is now called Merkwood, even before it came to have that dark name. That was long before I was born, but I have visited with him many times in his home at Rosgabel when I would bring him news from afar, but I have not seen him since he abandoned Rosgabel. What could drive a wizard from his own home? He was gone from his home before I could ask. But there has been a growing threat and darkness in the south of Merkwood. I believe Rosgabel is no longer safe, even for a wizard. But fear not. I know Radagast's favored places in the north of Merkwood. We will find him, or I will bring you to a place you are likely to find him at the very least. Then it looks like we have to head for Merkwood. We will be ready. I can't believe what I've heard. You're actually setting out to find a dragon? We spent many long years trying not to be found by one. Ah, but when the three of you did walk into Mount Gundabad alone, and you lived to tell the tale. So if anyone has a chance against Urgast, it might be you. Ordinarily, I'd be dead set against riling up a dragon. It seems Hagendaur has already done that. So I'll just wish you luck and let it go at that. What about you here? Do you think Nordenbot will be safe after the blow we struck at Mount Gundabad? We killed hundreds of orcs when the roof came down at Gundabad. Maybe thousands if we're lucky. That's all the fewer to march against us here. But that just means we went from certain defeat to likely defeat. If the dragon joins up with Agendauer, we're right back at certain again. So, you think going after the dragon is a bad idea? Who can say? It's more you I'm worried about than us here. Bold you may be, but dragons are dragons. We dwarves have suffered enough from dragons. Better to face Urgost on our terms, rather than waiting for him to come to us. Farewell, kids. Chili for my oh. It's too bad we can't stay for a while. It's been too long since I enjoyed real dwarven hospitality. I trust you're enjoying your time here at Nordenbad. Good luck with whatever befalls. Farewell, kinsman. Something? Speak up! Time's a wasted. Hi, it's a fine day for pounding the anvil. What can I do for you? I'd best be going. Goodbye. There is some fine stonework here. Very fine indeed. There are skilled artisans here, to be sure. Ah, there's a view that would move the heart of any dwarf. It's marvelous! My mind is still uneasy about your plan to deal with Urgast. But if you are set on this course, then Radagast may help you find the dragon's lair. Seek for the wizard in Mirkwood. What can you tell me of Mirkwood? Precious little. The forest stretches on for endless leagues to the south, and each mile is darker and more perilous than the next. My folk are uneasy in the shadows of those trees. Although we go there sometimes for timber, we never pass far into the wood. 
How well do you know this fellow, Radagast? Not well, but we've had some dealings with him in the past. He seems an honest enough wizard. Though you would be wise not to harm any birds or beasts while anywhere near his home. He calls all wild creatures friends, save for those who serve the Dark Lord. Is there anything else you might tell me about dragons? Vile creatures, as wicked as they are terrible. They drove most of my people from these mountains with their deprivations. Curse them all. I'd best keep your wits about you if you intend to face Urgast. It's clear our next task is to find Radagast. We'd best be about it. Farewell, Lord Gorin. Nobody shapes stone like a dwarf. spread his veil of lies no more. Yet I fear this was no chance meeting. If Wolfram was here, it could mean trouble for Radagast. You should press on and find him. The sorcerer said something about a wizard. He can only have meant Radagast. But why would Agandaur send his minions after Radagast? The brown wizard concerns himself little with the outside world. Yet he has worked against Sauron in the past. Perhaps Agandaur merely wishes to settle an old score, 
but it seems more likely he seeks to prevent Radagast from aiding his enemies. We should find him. I don't like this. Agadaur seems to be one step ahead of us. If so, Radagast may be in grave danger. How far are we from the wizard's dwelling? It is difficult to say for certain. Even the eyes of an eagle cannot pierce the interwoven boughs of Mirkwood, and clearings are few in this wood. I've passed through Mirkwood once before on the old forest road. The memory is not a pleasant one, but the wood feels even darker and more treacherous here. What awaits us beyond this clearing? I cannot say for certain. Mirkwood is no place for my kind. We can soar over the great wood, but its secrets remain hidden beneath the trees. The forest has an evil reputation, however. Be on your guard as you search for Radagast. The Wood Elves make their home in Mirkwood. Maybe they could lend us a hand. It is true, King Thranduil's people dwell in the forest. But many dark miles lie between here and the Elven King's halls. One might wander for weeks in this part of Mirkwood without encountering an elf. I encountered men when I passed on the road west. Are there none of these woodmen in this part of the forest? You speak of the Bjornings. Yes, there are hearty men who dwell on the western edge of Mirkwood. But they are rarely found this far north, and they are wary of strangers, as any who dare to dwell in this wood should be. We'll continue the search on foot. Should we look for you here once we've found him? No, I must find my companions. They are probably worried about me. Together, we will keep watch from above. Radagast has many friends among the birds of Mirkwood. If you find him, he can send a message to us easily enough. Ah, what is that foul creature? Ah, it stinks! Who can say? Some beast from an older world, maybe. Bred and twisted by the Dark Lord to serve his most trusted servants. We'll find him, but what about you? Are you hurt? The beast did its damage, but not enough to keep me from the air. I will be fully recovered soon enough. We'll continue the search on foot. Should we look for you here once we've found him? No, I must find my companions. They are probably worried about me. Together, we will keep watch from above. Radagast has many friends among the birds of Mirkwood. If you find him, he can send a message to us easily enough. Very well. Good luck, Belleron. I don't like the look of this Mirkwood. I wish our path would have led us elsewhere. Why would Radagast choose to make his home in such a place? They say that Mirkwood was not always like this. It was fair enough before the shadow of the Dark Lord fell over it. That shadow lies here still. There are evil creatures in this wood. Be on your guard.
encampment of orcs. Be watchful. The orcs have given away our presence. I don't like this. Keep your eyes open. these things they look like eggs insect eggs maybe but so many and so large they've tried to hide it but no one stand back i'm bringing this wall down
spider tracks leading deeper into the woods. It appears as if they were dragging something. I fear it could be Radagast, but whether he was living or dead, I cannot say. Thank you for my life, friends. I had abandoned all hope before you appeared. I am Glohirin, an elf of the Woodland Realm. It is our custom to be wary of strangers, yet I have never been happier to see unfamiliar faces. We haven't traveled all the way to the Wood Elf Realm, have we? No. The Woodland Realm lays many days' travel to the east. Filthy orcs. I had no idea this part of Merkwood so full of them. Orcs can be found throughout Mirkwood, save where my people's realm is maintained. Yet never have I seen so many in this part of the wood. There are separate tribes and companies present as well. Some have come from the Grey Mountains to the north, but there are also large and savage Uruks out of Dol Guldur, far to the south. The enemy prepares to make war in earnest. This bodes ill for the Woodland Realm. Happy to help. I'm far. And my friends here are Andriel and Eridan. But how'd you end up in such a tight spot? I am one of King Thranduil's wardens. My companion Galron and I were tasked with scouting this portion of the wood. We found enemies gathering here, but for what purpose we could not tell. We thought to consult with Radagast the Brown who dwells nearby, but we found the danger grew greater as we approached his home. But what of you? How is it you three are here in Merkwood? We're here looking for Radagast, too, but it seems he's come to trouble. Elf, man, and dwarf seeking a wizard. There is a story here to be sure, but we have no time for tales now. Radagast is likely in grave danger, and so too my friend Galron. Can your people help us in our search for Radagast? No, the Woodland Realm lays many days' travel to the east. We can expect no help from there. Where's this Galron gotten to? Alas, I cannot say. We came upon a band of orcs, and while we battled them, spiders began to cast down their lines from the trees above. 
I was entangled, and the orcs bore me away. I can only hope that Galron escaped a similar fate. Orcs and spiders working together in this manner bodes ill for my people, and more so for Galron. I must find him. I've heard all about the spiders of Mirkwood from the kid, but I've never heard of them working together with orcs. Orcs and spiders are constant foes of my people, but rarely have we contended with both at once. I fear the enemy has made alliance with the Spider Queen, Sinathra, who is rumored to dwell deep within the mountains of Mirkwood. We'll help you find your friend.
fighters! Let him hang a bit first. 
slowly now. He yet lives. Aye, and he's coming around. Ooh. Radagast, are you well? Ah, oh, what a thoroughly unpleasant experience. I shall have more pity for flies in the future. There are a lot of enemies lurking about, and it's clear they're after you. Any idea why? Ah, oh, the enemy never needs a reason to kill and destroy. But if I were to hazard a guess why they were after me in particular, I would say it is because of my talent for gathering and sending news quickly. That could mean they are planning attacks against our nearby allies. The Bjornings and my woodland kin are in danger. We must warn them. Oh, you needn't concern yourself with that. As I said, I have a talent for such things. I will make sure our friends are warned. It's the neighborly thing to do, after all. I've heard a lot about the spiders in Mirkwood. Even had to deal with a few in my time. But I've seen nothing like this. Are there more of this sort around? I certainly hope not. This was the Spider Queen Senathra. I've heard many fearful tales of her from my friends among the forest creatures, but I've never before had the misfortune of encountering her. I'm rather surprised to find her here. By all accounts, she kept her lair in the craggy mountains near Dorgaldur, far to the south. Dorgaldur. That is a name that haunts the tales of my folk. What do you know of it? It's a terrible place. A fortress built upon a bare hill in the south of the forest. Of old, the Dark Lord himself dwelt there. He was driven out some years past, but it seems that evil has returned once more to Dol Guldur. 
I am told that fell creatures of many sorts are gathering there. Roscobel, my usual home, lies a little too close to Dolgeldor for comfort, so I came here. I have several such retreats. You can never be too prepared, living in Mirkwood and all. But, do I know you? No, Radagast, but you do know me. Ah, young Bellarum. It's a pleasure to see you. So you are a part of this little party, too? <laughs> it's quite a mixed bag, really. I don't see elves, dwarves, and men rubbing elbows often, especially not in Mirkwood. <laughs> now add an eagle as well. This is turning out to be a rather extraordinary day, really, all things considered. I am just glad we came in time. My friends and I have a mission, and we came seeking your aid. We must find the dragon Urgost, who dwells in the Grey Mountains. And we have no time for a lengthy search. We were told you might be able to help us find him. You wish to find a dragon? Oh dear, is that really wise? Spider venom can be deadly. You best let us attend to you before it's too late. No cause for concern. It happens I know a thing or two about venoms and poisons. Sinathra's poison could be deadly, but killing prey outright is not the way of such creatures. No, they much prefer to keep their meals alive for a time. <laughs> Just as a farmer might age a cheese to improve its flavor, really. She used only enough venom to keep me quiet. We need to find that dragon. Do you know where he can be found? Well, he's a dragon, so I would say the Grey Mountains. I... yes, that is as we have already said. But do you know where in the Grey Mountains? I haven't the foggiest notion, really. It seems we were misinformed. Ah, now, not so fast. I may not know where Ergos dwells, but I just might be able to find out. But I would need my staff for that, and I, I seem to have mislaid it somewhere. I've met one other wizard, Gandalf the Grey. You seem... different from him. Do I? Well, cannot one dwarf be unlike another, and yet both still be dwarves? <laughs> I suppose there is no one quite like Gandalf, although I sometimes feel as if I should be more like him. At any rate, I assure you, we are both wizards in spite of our differences. You wizards look like men, but you live as long as elves. I'd say you're neither, but that leaves me wondering just what you are and where you come from. That I am forbidden to reveal. Some things must remain a secret, at least for the present. Suffice to say, we are. And think on it no more. You're in luck. We found your staff. I knew you have need of it once we found you. Ah, oh, excellent. Aren't you the clever one? <laughs> Crafty as a fox in your own fashion, too, I can tell. I'm grateful to you. Well then, let's see what we can find out, shall we? My friends might know a thing or two. Indeed. Very brave of you. Well done, my friend. And there you have it. Uh, perhaps you could explain further for those of us who do not speak the language of swallows. Oh, you don't? Quite a pity, really. 
They're rather pleasant little fellows. Always something nice to say. Well, what did this one have to say? Quite a bit, actually. Here, let me show you. Have you considered my offer? You bargain with what you do not possess, man of the self. I will have your price soon enough. Think carefully before you spurn this offer, dragon. As mighty as you are, you would do well not to offend my master. I did not say I refused. Only that you must first achieve my reward before you can give it. Ah, formality. I go now to take your price, but I will leave men behind to await your answer. Consider well, but not too long. My time and my thoughts are my own to spend. For now. Sinathra is no more. That was a feat worthy of heroes of the Elder Days. I am honored to have witnessed it. Any luck finding your friend? Sadly, I was unable to save Galron. I discovered he fell in the same battle in which I was captured. I recovered his war gear from the Orcs, and I wish you to have it. Galron would be pleased to know it was still being used to fight the enemy. I must hasten home to inform my lord of everything that I've learned here. I shall pause only long enough to consult with Radagast. Farewell, Farin. May the friendship between our peoples grow stronger. The little cave swallow has told me where Ogost's lair can be found. I can guide us there when you are ready to depart. Oh, still here? I thought you were off to find a dragon. I've heard a lot about the spiders in Mirkwood. Even had to deal with a few in my time. But I've seen nothing like this. Are there more of this sort around? I certainly hope not. This was the Spider Queen, Sanathra. I've heard many fearful tales of her from my friends among the forest creatures, but I've never before had the misfortune of encountering her. I'm rather surprised to find her here. By all accounts, she kept her lair in the craggy mountains near Dorgaldur, far to the south. What can you tell me about the foul creature we seek? The dragon? I believe you'll find dragons have three things in abundance. Strength, cunning, and greed. You'd be wise not to underestimate Urghost when it comes to any of these. I'd really rather wish you weren't set on finding the dragon. You seem like such nice people. There are a lot of enemies nearby. Are you sure you will be all right alone? <laughs> Don't concern yourself with that. I've lived in Mirkwood for a very long time. I won't be caught off guard again. Where will you go from here, Radagast? Perhaps I will visit my friends in the Wood Elf Realm. Or I might drop in on a few folks I know among the Bjornings. There's even a very nice family of badgers that might take me in. I will have to give it some thought. Pardon me. Did you say badgers? Yes, indeed. Oh, I know what you're thinking. How can anyone get along with a group of grumpy old badgers? <laughs> It's true, they're not as amiable as foxes, but they're really quite agreeable once you get to know them. Yes, yes, I'm sure you're right. Well, good luck to you, Radagast.
Farin. I do hope you've come to give me an account of your recent adventures. Well, I certainly don't need to tell you that Berkwood is a dangerous place. But we couldn't have been prepared for what we found there. And so, with Sanathra dead and Radagast safe, we returned here to Rivendell to tell Elrond everything we learned. Heavens, what a tale! If I didn't know you for an honest dwarf, I'd think you were making the whole thing up. I hope I can keep all the facts straight. I'll have to jot down some notes. Oh, but perhaps I'll take a short nap first. Frequent naps help keep the mind sharp, you know. <laughs> so you're on your way to find a dragon. I set out to do that once myself, to my everlasting amazement. Of course, how could I forget? You've dealt with a dragon before. Why, yes, I suppose there are not too many people who've come face to face with a dragon and live to tell of it. Do you have any advice for me? Advice? Hmm, well, um, first I'd say stealing from them is generally a bad idea. I'd avoid that if you can. Secondly, should you find yourself in a pinch, try flattery. Well, what's that? Flattery? Yes, strange as it may seem, I was rather complimentary when I spoke with old Smaug and found he took to flattery as readily as my niece Angelica. <laughs> yes, vain creatures, the both of them. I really hope you'll come back later and fill me in on how your adventures are progressing. If I get the chance, I'll be sure to do that. Now I'd best be on my way. Farewell, Bill. It's good to see you. What news do you bring? Here's good news for a change. My friends and I went looking for Agendaur and Gundabad. And instead, we found a lost group of Longbeards, our kin. What? Long lost kin in the Grey Mountains? How can that be? How did they escape the Scourge of the Dragons when all others were destroyed or fled? They have a hidden refuge called Nordenbad. It's magnificent. By my beard. When all this trouble is finished, you must show me the way there. I would meet these distant kinsmen and welcome them to trade with Erebor. They're eager for some contact with the rest of the world, especially their kin. But it'll take some doing before it's safe to travel to Nordenbad. So it's goodbye for now. It's good to see you. What news do you bring? It seems I'll be facing a dragon soon. A beast called Urghost. I'd welcome any advice. A dragon? What madness drives you to the lair of such a deadly creature? Agendaur's out to win the dragon over to his side. We can't let that happen. How the three of you could hope to kill a dragon is beyond me. I know of only one person who bandied words with a dragon and lived to tell of it, and that would be Bilbo. I reckon he's the one to be giving you advice. My advice would be to stay well away. It's time to separate Agendaur's head from his shoulders. Goodbye, Claude. Radagast has confirmed our fears. Agendaur is indeed forging an alliance with Urgost. If you cannot prevent this, Dragonfire will soon engulf the fields and settlements of the north. No land is beyond the reach of the dragon. No fortification can withstand him. May the Valar grant you strength of arm and spirit as you undertake this task. Have you any advice on the best way to deal with a dragon? I fear, in spite of all my long years of study, there is little I can offer you in the way of advice, for never have I faced a dragon. Indeed, to my knowledge, the only person now living who has done so is the hobbit Bilbo Baggins. Perhaps he would have a thought or two on the matter. 
What will you do here? We will continue to plan for the defense of Imladris. The enemy will not find us unprepared. I will send warnings to such allies as we have. There is strength to be found in Imladris still, but in truth, you three may be our best hope. Now I begin to regret allowing my sons to ride south. It seems we may well have need of them here after all. Your sons left Rivendell? Where'd they go? Word came to me that Aragorn was in need of his kin. Alborod gathered as many of his people as he could in haste and set out for the south to join him. My sons greatly desired to accompany them for the sake of their long friendship with Aragorn. I granted their wish and allowed them to go. Uh, was that wise? Perhaps not, but at the time your victory over Bargrisar led me to believe we were safer here than we actually are. Still, who may say where my sons will best serve our cause? Their fate calls them south, even as yours calls you northward. Agandaur won't get his dragon. We will make sure of that. You will earn the eternal thanks of all the people of the North if you do so. We are very close to the Dragon's Lair. We must now go cautiously. If Orgost was to catch us airborne, he might lay us low with a single blast of Dragonfire. It is best you proceed on foot, while we shadow you from above. Look around you, friends. Long have I wished to gaze upon these lost mansions of my people. I only wish I had time to explore them. Then it was your folk who delved the ruins that surround us? Aye. Once there was a mighty host of dwarves living in these mountains, before the dragons came from the northern wastes to plunder our homes. Ah, to have seen these realms in the days of their glory. <sighs> Seems we're always fated to lose the fruits of our labor. Any idea what we can expect to find here, apart from the dragon? There are orcs aplenty in the Grey Mountains, but do not forget that Agandar said he was leaving men to await the dragon's answer. We must be prepared to deal with them as well. You believe Urgost is a fire drake? Even if he proves to be one of the fireless cold drakes, he will still be a terrible foe. Yet I fear we will find Urgost is no cold drake. Do you think the dragon will be on the lookout for us? I hope it is not so. But the keen senses of dragons are legendary. I fear he will see, hear, or smell us long before we can come to grips with him. Still, if Agandar's minions are hereabouts, it may be that their presence will mask our own. No point in delaying any longer. Let's get going. Let's hope dragons are less formidable than legend makes them.
some remnant of the men who served the Witch King long ago. Yeah. await the dragon's answer. They must be bold to camp on a dragon's doorstep like this. A dwarf is upon you! These must 
must be the men Agandar left to await the dragon's answer. They must be bold to camp on a dragon's doorstep like this. Yeah. That was too close for comfort. You have my thanks.
tremendous one. We came only to see your splendor. We've always heard that dragons were the most magnificent of creatures, and we wished to see if the tales were true. Did you now? Well then, what do you think of those tales now that you see me? They don't do justice to your true glory. Such pleasant speech for one who invaded my home with murder in mind. Perhaps you care to tell me what you are really doing here. Ah, there's no point in trying to fool one as wise as you, is there? Certainly there is not. And so I ask you once again, why are you here? We are hunting a servant of the Dark Lord, a man called Agendaur. Deal? What sort of deal? Agandar wishes me to join him in his conquest of the North. As a reward, he offers the realm of Nordenbard and all the wealth found there. Nordenbard? Oh, no. That's no reward for one as mighty and glorious as yourself. I agree. If I wanted Nordenbard, I would have taken it long ago. No, I have my eyes set on a far greater prize. I want the ancient fortress of the Witch King himself. Karn Doom. Karn Doom? Where is Karn Doom? It sits atop the northernmost peaks of the Misty Mountains. Of old, it was the capital of the realm of Angmar, the mighty fortress of the Witch King himself. What do you want with such a place? The Grey Mountains are no longer a suitable home for one of my might and majesty. The oft plundered homes of the dwarves who once dwelt here hold neither the wealth nor the grandeur I desire. Not even that watery hole, Nordenbard. No, I would be lord of loftier halls and master of the hidden vaults of the Witch King as well. That accursed pit? Take it then. What's stopping you? has taken control of Khan Doom. From there, he plans his conquest of the North. If it's Karn Doom you want, feel free to take it from Agendaur. You'd even have our thanks for that. Be assured, I care nothing for your thanks. Yes, I want Khan Doom for my own. But I would be a fool to attack a servant of Sauron. As mighty as I am, I have no wish to make an enemy of the Dark Lord. You, on the other hand, have already done so. If you would see me remain neutral in this war, destroy Agendaur and turn over Khan Doom to me. It would be an honor to serve the great Burghost. Karn Doom will be yours. <laughs> you are a poor liar, dwarf. But at least your lies are pleasant. Such flattery should be rewarded. I have gathered a thing or two from these ruins that you may find useful as you undertake my task. I'll not refuse anything that could help us against Agendaur. <laughs> of course not. Now dig it and go. Oh, and if, as I strongly suspect, you care about the fate of Nordenbard, you might wish to return there. Agendaur is moving against it as we 
speak. They will need our aid. We must hurry. Oh, yes. By all means, hurry. <laughs> Indeed, what transpired within that cave. But if our friends are in danger, then questions must wait. I will call Armanel and Baranthor, and we will depart at once.
stop the sappers before they can blast down the inner doors.
endless battle. Nordenbard is saved. But at what cost? Bellarom! Tell me he's not gone. No, he lives. But he is sorely hurt. Can he be saved? I believe so, but his wounds are severe. He will need time and constant care if he is to recover. You'll have that. The best that we could give, I promise you. I'll take charge here. Go to my father and tell him what's happened. He'll send dwarves to help with Bellarab. Goran yet lives? That's some good news, at least. He was wounded in the fighting, but he's still on his feet. Hurry inside now and speak to him.
Once again, we have Norden Bader in your debt. Without your aid, we would not have held them. The enemy is defeated, but at very great cost. I hate to think of the price you paid to hold Nordenbad. Aye, so many good dwarves lost. I do not think we will fight again in this war, unless in a final stand upon the shores and bridges of Azanzaram itself. We can only hope that Agendaur now believes the price of taking Nordenbad is too high. What will you do if they attack again? Then every dwarf will sell his life as dearly as he may before the end. And I do not think they will return. All their commanders have been slain. All their commanders? But what of Agandar? Did he fall in battle as well? It would seem he did not consider Nordenbad worthy of his personal attention. We saw no sign of his presence during the battle. Coward. Sending others to do his fighting for him. Our friend Belaram lies gravely injured. We must help him. I have already ordered my people to bear him into the hall. He will have the best care we can give, for it is certain we owe him our lives. But what of Urgost? You set out to deal with the dragon. Did you find him? Yes, but Agandar found him first. He promised the dragon Nordenbard. But we offered to give him Agandar's stronghold, the fortress of Karn Doom. Karn Doom? The ancient fortress of the Witch King of Angmar? Yes. We should have known Agandar would reoccupy that accursed place. If Orgos desires that black pit, he is welcome to it. But Agandar will need to be dealt with first. Aye, and that's why we must go to Karndum. Such a trek will be long and difficult. And the loss of the eagles means you will need to go on foot. Well, so be it. Payment is long overdue. Agandauer must die! I can spare no warriors to send with you. The strength of Nordenbad is all but spent. Yet it would please me if you would take these. They are heirlooms of my house. The greatest works of my people passed down through long generations. Parting with them would be hard, but your fight is our fight, and so I give them freely. Choose what you will, and may it help avenge the fallen. to the tavern. You should be there when he wakes. Good to see you standing on your own two feet. The battle may be over, but now a smith's work begins in earnest, making repairs. This'll cheer you up a mite. It's a black pearl, and a beauty it is. Never have my hands held a treasure so glorious. Words alone aren't enough to express my gratitude. Here, take this in return. Some of my finest craftwork. Only the best for you. you and your friends our lives, and I won't forget it. By my beard, Eigendauer must pay for this! Whatever help you need from me, you have but to ask. We live, but we've taken deep hurt. Two of the great eagles died defending us, and Belaram is badly injured. It's a grim day, to be sure. We'll do what we can for the eagle, but that's not in my hands. I've lost many a friend and kinsman of my own. My heart burns hotter than my forge for vengeance. But this is where I'm needed. I've many repairs to make and much labor before me to keep us in readiness for battle. 
If you need my services, you have but to ask. With such losses, can Nordenbad withstand another attack? They'll have to drive us out, every last one of us, and we'll fill the lake with their blood before we fall. But there never were many of us. These losses are nearly a mortal blow. I can provide the armor and weapons, but we need the living to bear them. If Agandaur isn't brought down, it's only a matter of time before he regroups and returns to finish his work. Something? Speak up! Time's a waste. Goodbye. I'll be back on my feet soon enough. Please, leave me be. He was my brother. You saved Nordenbad. No doubt of that. Had you not shown up, Nordenbad would be in the hands of those filthy orcs by now. They did all they could. Balaram, can you hear me, my friend? Farad, I am within walls of stone. And here, no sounds of battle. Then Nordenbad was saved. Yes. They have withdrawn with heavy losses. How long have I been here like this? But a short while. Do not attempt to rise. You must save your strength. Where are Berenthor and Armanel? Don't concern yourself with that sort of thing right now. You should just try to rest. Such words only increase my unease. Tell me what happened. I wish I could tell you otherwise, but they fell in battle. Both were as valiant as any warrior could be. They died heroes, and we'll never forget their sacrifice. Your words are kind, and I thank you for them. But my friends are dead nonetheless. What is more, they died under my command. It is a heavy burden to bear. But what of Agandar? Was he too slain in battle, or does he yet live? Agandar did not lead the assault. He is likely still at Khandun. Then we must seek for him there. Armanel and Barenthor must be avenged. There is no doubt in your courage, Belaron. But courage won't heal wounds. We've got to go on. But you will have to stay here. Yes. It is clear I cannot accompany you now. And if you delay, others may die. I will not be responsible for that. Go, with my blessing upon you, friends. Farewell, brave one. We'll miss your company, but I expect to see you strong and healthy when we get back. Don't you dare disappoint me.
You've returned. I, I'm happy to see you safe. Something's wrong, that's plain. What happened, lass? I thought maybe you had heard. The townsfolk talk of little else now. A gang of wicked men attacked Bree. We fought them off, but five of our people were killed. My Rowley was one of them. I wish I'd been there. It would have been different. I'm certain it would have been, but there was no way you could have known. You are certainly not to blame for what happened. The evil at the root of this crime will be destroyed. Rowley will be avenged. I hope you're right. It would be good to know that others won't have to suffer what I have. My heart goes out to you. Be well, lass. Ah, we meet again. You were right. The brief folk bought up every weapon I had to sell. It's a pity I couldn't have made it back sooner, though. Eh? Why is that? Did something happen here? You haven't heard? A gang of brigands attacked the town. Some townsfolk were killed fighting them off. If they'd been better armed, it might have saved their lives. Oh, that's a shame. But at least they're better prepared now. That they are. The brigands skulking around these lands will think twice before they bother Bree now. Let's just hope nothing worse comes their way. If I have my way, it won't. Goodbye, Groff. Oh, it's you. You were right about that stranger from the south. He was no good. Tell me what happened. A whole gang of ruffians attacked the town. That southerner was one of them. They killed some folk. Killed them dead. Good people. I've known all my life. What became of the Southerner? He won't bother anyone again. I made sure of that myself. You were one of those that fought them then? I was. The whole town banded together to drive them out. I just wish I could have done more. That's quite a change from the first time we met. I was a fool to listen to that kind of talk. I wanted to get back at some people in this town. Blame them for my problems, I guess. I don't feel that way anymore. What will you do now? I'm part of the new town watch. And I'm doing a few things to help out the widows and orphans left behind by the fight. I feel like I owe them. Sounds like you're doing just fine then. Glad to hear it. Back again. What can I do for you? Farewell, Smith. Hello. Pardon me if I seem glum, but troubled times have come to Bree. Suddenly, selling old weapons has become a very grim business. Still, I may have something here that will be of use to you. I'd best be on my way. I have to thank you again for bringing me those weapons. The town was attacked by a gang of ruffians. I was able to arm several townsmen and we managed to drive them off. We lost some men, but it could have been far worse. Oh, a great pity. I hope you'll face nothing worse. The town is well armed now, but our men still lack any real skill with their weapons. I hope they have time to learn. What are you doing to prepare for any further trouble? We've organized a watch and keep a strong guard on the gates at all times. Men are training with their new weapons daily. This isn't the same town it once was.
So, you're back. I hope you aren't intending to make trouble. You'll find that everyone's keeping a careful eye on strangers now. What happened here? We've had trouble right here in Bree. Outsiders attacked the town. Some of our own folk joined in with them. There was a real set to in the streets and we drove them out, but we lost some good men. What are you facing? The woods nearby are filled with robbers and cutthroats, and wolves have taken to roaming our fields at night. I've heard rumors of worse things lurking out there as well. Maybe you've come to appreciate the rangers a bit more now, huh? I'm told that the rangers have all gone off somewhere. It's plain to everyone now how much they did to keep us safe. This town will be a lot more welcoming to rangers if ever they come back. Let's hope they return. Welcome. I did not think to see you here again. You've missed Halbarad. He's gone away to the south, and many of the Dunedain have gone with him. But if you are in need of supplies, I may still have a thing or two for you. Halbarad has gone? Where did he go? Word came to us through the elves of Rivendell that Aragorn was in need of his kinsmen. Seems bloody war has come to Gondor. The sons of Elrond accompanied them. Ah, to be a younger man. You may have missed a war in Gondor, but there are still battles to be fought here in the north. For you, perhaps. But I have seen too many winters to ride to war now. Yet, if our hope should fail, I'm still likely to die with a sword in my hand. For my part, I would not mind. But for the sake of those who are still young, I hope it will not be so. We need every hand that can hold a weapon. Better for us all to die fighting than to live as slaves of the Dark Lord. <sighs> You've a fierce spirit. I hope it sustains you in the days ahead. But now you have a long and dangerous journey before you. You must be prepared. Take a look at the stores I have on hand. Halbarad has gone off to the south with as many of our people as he could gather. War is brewing, and Aragorn has need of his kinsmen. I'll be on my way. Have you heard? Halbarad has led a company of Dúnedain south to aid Aragorn in the war. If only I would have been allowed to join them. Too young, they said. You may not have ridden off to war. But there's trouble all across Middle-earth. War might soon come to you. I fear you may be right about that. The best we can do is face our doom bravely, wherever it may overtake us. Aye, and I've no doubt you will, should it come to that. Good luck to you, Aloran. Most of our people have gone south to aid in the war. How many will return, I wonder?
Welcome back, Farron. You've had a long and difficult journey, no doubt. I heard about the loss of your eagle friend. Terrible news, just dreadful. And now I hear you plan to go after Agandar himself. You will be careful, won't you? I'd, I'd hate to lose you as well. Those who venture into the wild must be well prepared. Examine the goods Imladris has to offer. It's good to see you. What news do you bring? Congratulate me, kinsman. I've bargained with a dragon and live to tell of it. Not unlike Bilbo, if I do say so. What's this? Bargaining with a dragon? Are you mad? The only good dragon is a dead dragon. You'd best explain yourself. Yes, yes, any other time I'd agree and then some. But these are desperate times with desperate needs. Now we've got a chance to attack Agandauer without a dragon on our heels. Well then, you'd best take advantage of it. Don't give the dragon time to regret the bargain and betray you. Time is running out for all of us. It's time to separate Agandauer's head from his shoulders. Goodbye, Glo. I am pleased to see you here in Imladris once more. Is there something I can help you with? Good news. We've captured all the scrolls we were looking for. You managed to gather all six of the remaining scrolls? You are truly a marvel, my friend. I will see to it that these are destroyed. You have done a great service to our cause by keeping these from the hands of the enemy. Such dedication is deserving of reward. I have selected a few relics of great age and power from among the treasures kept here in Imladris. They may serve you well. Take them with my thanks. Does this mean we won't have to face any more of those accursed sorcerers? Those who have learned dark arts from these writings will not forget what they know simply because the scrolls are destroyed. However, it will prevent, or at the very least, slow the spread of this evil. But let us not forget that given time, Agandaur is capable of creating more such works. As long as he lives, there will always be the possibility that more dark sorcerers will emerge to oppose us. All the more reason to be rid of Agandaur. The sooner the better. Goodbye, Master Elrond. Hello again. What can I help you with? I should be going.
It is kind of you to seek me out again, Farin. My father is deeply concerned over the tidings you bring. While my thoughts stray often to those who travel south, our most immediate danger comes from the north. Have you heard anything about Frodo? Is it not strange that the fate of the world should rest upon one who is so small? And yet the hopes of all who would stand against the enemy depend upon the success of his quest. And for this reason, it is best to say as little of it as possible. Those few of us who know of the Ring must guard this secret closely, and keep any hint of knowledge from reaching Sauron. Ah, you've got a good head on your shoulders, lass. Er, uh, uh, I mean, you are wise, my lady. The less we say about Frodo, the safer he'll be. It's time to get back to work. Farewell, lady. destroy us if they could. The foulness may work in our favor. Such a place would probably be lightly guarded. I hope you're right. It's hard to fight and hold your breath at the same time. It's not possible! Wretched creatures between the clouds. 
understand the dark sorcerer. Few can master those foul arts for long. And this is the price of failure. There must be a lever that raises this gate. There's a lever over here.
sorcery! Slay the sorcerer!
Kronost. You? You are the ones who have followed in my wake, upsetting my plans. Yes, and we have thwarted you at every turn. All you have done is raise my ire. Because of your insolence, my conquest of the North shall be all the more cruel. Such threats only strengthen our resolve, monster. Come down and face us, Agandawa! You have much to answer for! Witless fools. I learned at the hand of the Dark Lord himself. I am Sauron's greatest weapon in the North. You rush only to your death.
flying now? Death would be acceptable if it meant an end to Agendar. from my heart. I feel it too. He's done it. Frodo's really done it. The ring has been destroyed. Be that as it may, you must still honor your oath to me. God doom is mine. We are true to our word, dragon. You are welcome to it. Just see you mind your manners, old worm. And we'll have no quarrel. It's a long way home from here, for each of us. Let us make for Emlodris. You will find no better place to rest and recover. You have but to say the word, and we will press on. What say you, Farin? Should we go to Rivendell? A little rest sounds good.